The inaugural MLB The Show Players League has provided plenty of unforgettable moments and has given baseball fans worldwide an opportunity to watch some of their favorite players in action. It's the classic, baby! After all the sensational plays, yeah! uh, gut-wrenching losses, oh! and thrilling walk-off wins, hey! the regular season comes down to this week. 30 major leaguers vying for eight playoff spots, but only one can be crowned champion. Join me, Robert Flores, as we take an inside tour of the league and bounce from game to pivotal game, joined by some very special guests who will give us their insight on the competition. The road to the playoffs is almost at an end. Find out who's in, who's out, and who will ultimately be best in the show. There is a chance. Okay, so Good evening and welcome to this primetime broadcast of MLB The Show 20 Players League. I'm your host, Robert Flores from MLB Network. Thank you for joining us from wherever you're joining us. And as that opening montage suggested, our playoff field is nearly set. Top eight players reach the playoffs. Quarters and semifinal action will be decided via a best of three series. And then our championship series, a best of five. However, there is still plenty to be decided before that field is set. This broadcast is going to be a little bit different because we have so many things still up in the air. We're going to be giving you some whip around coverage. Think of this as MLB tonight, MLB the show 20 players league style. Okay. 40 games. Many of those games have playoff implications. We're going to visit with all the players or many of the players and get their thoughts on how they're feeling in just a moment. But let's take a look at the standings. Okay. Now, if the playoffs were to begin today, right now, those players above that white line would be in the playoffs. However, there's still a lot to be decided. Ian Happ has won six in a row. He's making a bid for that eighth and final playoff spot. Amir Garrett, Fernando Tatis Jr., they'll be in action tonight, and we'll keep you updated with some live look-ins as well as some scoring updates. Also, that ticker that's right there, you see it? That's going to be live. Uh, that's going to be updating with live scores to keep you up to date on what's going on across the league. And as I mentioned, the regular season will wrap up with a special doubleheader on ESPN2 on Wednesday. We'll have more on that in just a moment. But uh, before we visit with our special guest, there's so many great things uh, that have come out of MLB The Show 20 Players League. Among them, the fact that you, the fans, have had a chance to interact with some of your favorite big leaguers from across the league. Here now, some of the best moments from some of the question and answer sessions from the streams. Check this out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your 2020 Players League. Who squats the most on the Rangers? I'm gonna tell you this much right now, Prince Fielder squatted about 400 something pounds before every game. It was the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen in my life. Let's say what's up to chat. Come here, champ, come here. He sees someone at the door right now. He's locked in. My best friend in that. I love everybody. They're really good teammates. Oh, KD. Someone tell me what May's saying on his channel. He can't be happy. Just hand in the game over and over again. What up, Peter? Favorite song currently? Yeah, I would say Look Up Child by Lauren Daigle. I think the Pirates will make it to the playoffs this year. You heard it here first. Weirdest autograph request. Someone had me sign their leg and uh, they went and got a tattoo. Favorite baseball player, now myself, Pete Alonso. Maybe Vogelbach. I like the Vogelbaum shirt. How many days in the season? Um, we play everybody in this league once. Who's gonna win the players league? In my opinion, between Gallo and Snell. Did I model my game after anybody? No, not necessarily. I grew up watching the Giants, so JT Snow, Rich Aurelia. Your best advice for a 12 year old as far as, as far as baseball. You always get better with time, and if you just put the work in, you'll just see improvements faster. Weird question, how does my hair look before the game? I shower right before every game starts. That's why my hair looks wet at the start of every game. If you throw a two seam fastball, you hold it like that. So what I do is I then take these fingers and I shift it over. So I'm like right on these seams the middle finger and ring finger. Then it's just comfortable grip, pinky just chilling on the side, circle right here, nice and loose. I hold it very loose. I hold all my pitches pretty loose, to be honest. 
All right, that's just some of the great moments from the chat, from the chat, from the stream. And as I said, 40 big games tonight across the MLB, the show 20 Players League. Many of them have playoff implications. At the top of our standings, it's still yet to be decided who's going to be our top seed, Joey Gallo or Blake Snell. Both of those guys are in action tonight, and we'll keep an eye on those games. As you see, both Gallo and Snell with just four losses, and behind them, it's Three players with seven losses. Jeff McNeil in action. Gavin Lux, Bo Bichette. Tommy Canely is at 17-8. and eight. Dwight Smith Jr., one of my favorite players in the league, using that Orioles lineup. He's at 19-10. and 10. And then Lucas Giolito, he has, he's still in single digits with losses. He's at 17-9. and nine. All right, let's bring in the de facto commissioner of MLB, the show 20 Players League. That's Trevor May. And Trevor... Uh, you know, I, I I enjoy your streams because you wear your emotions on your sleeve. There is no doubt how you're feeling or what you're thinking about uh, during the course of a game by uh, by, by judging how you're uh, reacting. E yep, uh, that rage when I was when I lost to Lazardo was uh, was real. It was that was not a front. That was genuine anger. So <laughs> uh, I'm glad, though, he was asking what I was saying because that's really funny now in hindsight. But it wasn't funny at the time. Uh, setting the, uh, the anger aside, what has been some of the, um, I don't know, what, what have been some of your, your favorite impressions or your favorite things about this league? Oh, I, I, honestly, I, I said this at the beginning, too. And the reason I like streaming so much and I, I play lots of different games and, 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 and the show gives the opportunity to get baseball fans, you know, specifically – kind of in the chat um, is just being able to interact with people. I mean, uh, we we get to do it a little bit during the season. We get to, you know, toss balls up to kids at the, at the stadium, but you don't get to have a conversation with them. Like, they don't get to ask questions, so we don't get to do Q&A. Q&A is like a big thing for me. I really, really enjoy it. Um, yeah. And uh, I just think it's awesome that there's 29 other guys, um, and there's a few guys in the league that, that streamed previously or had streams, um, but I think guys are buying into it a little more and are, and are really taking advantage of it. Um, and, and connecting with fans, and and that's our game's built on that. So uh, it's super fun. But I think the biggest highlight for me is is getting in Discord with Brett Phillips because Brett and I have played in some Fortnite tournaments together, uh, and we <laughs> we we had the old Royals Twins game, uh, which he walked me off with uh, Salvi yeah. Perez, who's hitting about I don't know eight hundred against the Twins in his career. So uh, that was that was one of the more fun games we I played. I think that was a good good time. So I wish I could have done that more actually. Well, we, we saw the standings there, and you're among a group of players trying to claw back really into the playoff picture. You're not eliminated yet, but uh, you, you're going to need some wins, and you're going to need some help. Yeah, uh, you know, it's what we call every year the playoff push. You know, um, it is one of the more fun times of the year during the regular season, so yeah, you know, crazy stuff happens. I just got to win one game at a time, take it one pitch at a time. That's and right not let myself give away at bats and not get, let myself get too rattled when something goes between well, someone's legs or something. Cause it's going to happen. So, uh, uh, you know, just gotta, gotta put that, uh, put that stuff I've learned over the last 26 years of playing baseball to work here and, and, and just, you know, believe you gotta believe. So, you know, and I believe I put myself in a situation, a situation where I, I still have hope. So I'm going to keep that hope until it's officially gone, I guess. Well, well, as you can see, uh, people that are watching, we're giving you a, a look. This is kind of the look we're going to give you uh, tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking with some players, and then the big portion of the screen, we'll give you some live look-ins. As you see, Lucas Giolito, as, as uh, we take a peek inside his stream, and we'll keep an eye on the games that have playoff implications moving forward here. As I said, 40 games uh, across, the, uh, across the league tonight. And whoever gets hot, they could play their way in. And if you have a bad night on the sticks, you could certainly play your way out. Uh, Trevor, I believe you're opening up with Blake Snell tonight, correct? I believe so. I'm not certain. I know that he was unable to make it last night, so, um, but I believe so. Uh, I think that Ty Buttry and I are going to try to get a game in, our, our makeup game from when his internet went out before um, okay. we actually play. So, But I do have Blake Snell tonight. I believe he is officially in, so you know, who knows? Maybe maybe he'll give me a, p a position player or something to face. Hopefully not Kiermaier, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that guy can throw 98, but somebody else would be great. 
Well, uh, Trevor, it's been it's been great catching up with you. It's it's been great to watch your streams. Uh, good luck tonight. Uh, let's bring in Cole Tucker from the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he joins us now. And and Cole, uh, we saw that you were a prominent member of that montage of of the question and answer session that you had with the chat. What have been your impressions from your participation in the Players League? Yeah, that's been the coolest part, and thank you, Robert, for having me on. Um, that's been the coolest part because it's no secret that when I play or when I'm at the stadium, I'm friendly and gregarious, and I talk to everyone, and I try to make everyone's experience at the ballpark better. And now that I can't play baseball, being able to do this, although it's something I'm familiar and like playing video games, I've never streamed before. This is a first for me. But to be able to interact with fans on the side of the screen, like that's been really cool and makes you feel awesome. And um, and like taking it a step further, being a little kid and being one of those people who is a fan and who would watch us. Like if I were little, I would totally be watching this before I was a pro baseball player. And to be on here playing myself in a major league game is, is pretty special. So it's been a really unique experience. I've been, I've enjoyed it. I, I read where you said uh, when you were asked if, if you wanted to take part, you said, I, I'm really not familiar. I, I, I haven't played the game a whole lot, but hey, I'll, I'll just try to figure it out on the fly. Um, what, what have you been in your impressions of, of, of the game? And, and spe uh, specifically, how do you think your skills have progressed as the league has gone on? <laughs> That's pretty much uh, how it happened. I, I don't even own a PlayStation. I'm playing Cody Bellinger's PlayStation. I went next door and grabbed it from him. I'm like, dude, I'm doing this thing. Help me out. And uh, it's been fun. Like, I've definitely got better. Before, I could control the little PCI thing at all. And I was just swinging freely like an idiot. But I feel like I've gotten better. I, I've hung in there with some really good teams. I've beaten some good teams. And uh, ultimately, it's just been cool to interact and uh, talk to people who I know and who I don't know. Like last night, Bo was beating the crap out of me. And I FaceTimed him like on the stream. I was like, dude, take it easy. You're killing me. This is brutal. But it's been really fun just to have fun with it and keep it loose and, and play, some, play some games. And, and for people in the, uh, in the chat that don't know, you and Cody Bellinger, our boys, you go way, way back. I, I love that you're actually using his PlayStation to participate in this in this league. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I, I owe him interest on it because I feel like I've kept it for, for so long. So <laughs> once we're done tonight, sadly, I'm not in the playoffs. I can give it back to him. But um, yeah. it's been really fun. It was really cool of him to give it to me. But it's been great. Well, it, it's been great having you. As I said, your, your streams are very enjoyable. I know Pittsburgh Pirate fans are definitely have your back, and they're always coming strong in the chat. And, and Trevor, uh, Twins fans always come up uh, showing love in, in your stream as well, huh? Yes, they do. We have, uh, we have some Twins emotes, and Go Twins has become a little bit of a, little bit of a, a call out whenever I say anything in anybody's chat, um, any of my buddies that I stream with or play other games with everyone says go twins when they see me so it's it's cool it's been a it's been a cool crossover and um i i'm having a blast and i, I love that uh i love that so many uh twins fans come out and and show love all right so we're giving a live look in now of of uh, the new york mets and the los angeles dodgers jeff mcneil and gavin lux both of those guys are in the thick of the playoff hunt we can tell you that Gavin, uh, Gavin Lux is currently one game ahead of Jeff McNeil around in the middle of the pack. So right now, both of those players, Lux and McNeil, are in good spots for, for uh, playoff contention, but still a lot to be decided. As you see in the third inning, Jeff McNeil uh, leading two to nothing, one out, but Gavin Lux has the go-ahead run at the plate. Hey, Cole, uh, one more for you. I thought it was interesting that when you said that you shower before every game, uh, how did that tradition start and why? Yeah, uh, long story. So like growing up in high school, you never shower before games. So you get out of school, you put your uniform on, you go up to the field and get ready. But in my first year in the minor leagues, Jordy Mercer was our big league shortstop. So that was who I was you know, striving to be like. And they would have big league players come down to Pirate City, our minor league complex, and tell us stories. And someone's like, Jordy, what's a, what's a ritual? Like, what's your, what do you do right before games? And he was like, you know what? I shower before every game, like right before I go out. And I was like, hmm, worked for him, got him to the big leagues. Like, I'm going to do that. And then when I got to Pro Bowl, I started showering before every game. And I just, I just do it. After batting practice, I'll eat, change, play some music, go take a shower, and go out. It's just kind of my thing now. Well, Cole, as you were telling that story, your virtual best friend, Cody Bellinger, just went deep 
for a three-run <laughs> homer off Jeff McNeil's New York Mets. So now Gavin Lux has a one-run lead going into the bottom of the third. Dang, of course he did. <laughs> so of course he did. Again, what else did he do? Yeah, big time, big time game here between Bellinger and Lux. Um, Cole, how surprised, as you see Jeff McNeil facing Kenley Jansen, it looks like that's going to be out number one. How surprised are you by, you know, I mean, you've known Cody Bellinger forever. I mean, did you expect that he would become among the elite, the of the elite in this game? He was always one of the most elite players that I knew, so... Yeah, like you always knew that he had the talent, but I never in a million years would have guessed that he'd be a guy that could hit 40 homers in the big leagues. Wow. Um, he was skinny like me. Like I think his senior high school, he only hit one home run, but he was always making hard contact. He was always great at defense. Um, so the talent is there, but I never thought that he'd be the guy like pounding his chest and flexing his arms around in third base every night at Dodger Stadium. But uh, I yeah. couldn't be happier for him that it's happened that way. But um, it's been pretty cool to watch. Trevor, obviously Dodgers are in different leagues. Uh, do you have any? Uh, uh, do you have any numbers against Cody Bellinger? Have you faced him? Had a, had that opportunity? Nope, I uh, I haven't faced Cody yet. Um, I'm really really sad because this season we were supposed to spend an entire week in LA and play the Dodgers and the Angels with an mm. off day. That would have been that would have been a great trip. Can't really beat that one. Um, That's tough. And. Uh, and face him there, but like, yeah, the only the only Dodger that I I have a lot of debats against is Mookie Mantle. So, and he uh, gen he he well, generally Peter, owns me. Robinson so. Cano sends one to there. the corner. They're having trouble. Get it in, it dude. Right. What's happening? And the tying run has scored, but he is out at third. So we're Ooh. going to extra innings. Lux and McNeil. Wow, tied. At three, jeez. Home team, dude. This Home team advantage is huge <laughs> in this league. All right, so it looks like uh, Jeff McNeil is going to bring in Justin Wilson to face the lefty Max Muncy. Remember, game tied at three after Cody Bellinger with one out in the top of the third hit a three-run bomb. Hey, Trevor, Colin here. We're going to let you go finish your games up. Thank you again so much for everything. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank you for all the commission hard work that you guys did and appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, guys. Cole, stay Absolutely. on for a second. We'll ask you some more questions, and then cool. uh, we'll get on to our next guest as well. Appreciate it, Trevor. We'll catch up in just a second, man. Good luck. Uh, all right, so keeping an eye on this game tied at three. They're in extra innings in the fourth. Uh, Cole, you guys, uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates have a new, man new manager in Derek Shelton. What were your impressions of him in the uh, brief time that you guys were together? Yeah, Derek Shooter Shelton. He's been great. Um, I really enjoyed him in spring training and just getting to know him in the offseason at Pirates Fest and just from having a lot of phone conversations. He comes across as being very chill, but also with the mindset and the thought process. We're going to get our work in. It's going to be concise. We're going to get what we need to get in. And then we're going to get out, and it's going to be a good time. And he likes to keep it light and fresh. I'm sure Trevor could have told us that because he was in Minnesota as the bench coach before. But I got nothing good, nothing but good things to say about him. He's been great to me and uh, has been great for our team so far. So I'm really looking forward to getting an opportunity to just play baseball, but also play for Shelton as well. Yeah. A couple scores here. Uh, Blake Snell has opened up a 6 nothing lead on John Duplantier in the second inning. Oh, well. And uh, – <laughs> and uh, Bo Bichette has tied his game up in the bottom of the third. Here we've got extra bases, and go-ahead run is going to be in scoring position for Gavin Lux. You know, Cole, Gavin Lux, uh, Tommy Canely, they, they have the benefit of playing with, uh, I mean, the, the Yankees lineup is fierce in this game. The Dodgers lineup, there's diamond players and diamond cards everywhere up and down the lineup. So uh, it, it's not a surprise that these guys are doing well with those teams. Not at all. Um, just like in real life, I mean, they're loaded. It feels like you're playing the NL All-Star team when you're playing Luxie and then when you play Tommy. <laughs> I'll find out tonight, but it probably feels like playing the AL All-Star team. 
So, I mean, you just got to try to pitch around people, but it, it's really hard with, with how fast guys lose their energy and confidence in this game. Like, it's hard to hit your spots, and that's what I struggle with most. But, um, yeah, I mean, hats off to them. But it would be really fun to, to play this game with the Dodgers or Yankees lineup or something like that. Now, the Pirates lineup, there's some pop there, led by, led by Josh Bell. Uh, what's it like having Josh as a teammate? Oh, my God. It, it is... It's like the 4th of July when Josh plays. Like, you know fireworks are coming at some point. It's just when and how many. Um, but he's a great teammate, and he's cool in the clubhouse. He's been great to my family. He's always checking in. He's just a really good human being. So it's been really sweet to watch all the success that he's had um, in his big league career. And I have no doubts that he's going to continue to have a ton more, despite him killing me on defense in this game. Like, Nothing against him as a player or a person, but it seems like every time there's a ball hit to him, I mess it up somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had that conversation with him yet? Have you reached out to him to ask him what's going on? Not yet. I'm just gonna wait till I can see him, and I'm gonna jump on him and put him in a chokehold or something. I should, I should, I should definitely have won a couple more games. We we need to practice defense in Pittsburgh because I've been I've been slipping. <laughs> well, runners here in Queens at first and second, winning run in scoring position. Jeff McNeil has Ahmed Rosario facing Joe Kelly. Ooh, uh-oh, Rexy. Cole, that doesn't we'll, quite have the distance. Sorry to interrupt, Robert. Cole, we'll let you yes, get sir. on with your games for the night. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you had fun in the players' our league. Absolutely. Hey, Cole, Thank thanks, so man. It was great. Yeah, great, great catching up with you, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. We'll talk soon. No doubt. See you soon, Robert. We'll see you guys. You got it, man. All right. Cole Tucker from the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates, really one of the more enjoyable streamers of this league. I know he didn't have the results that he would have hoped for, but I, I love his energy. I love his passion for the stream, and he's always uh, answering those questions uh, there in the chat. Here we have runners at first and second, Jake Marisnik acquired in the offseason from the Astros, facing Joe Kelly, ahead of the count, 2-1. to one. Remember, Jeff McNeil sitting one game back of Gavin Lux in the standings. Both of, both of these players, uh-oh, oh, that's perfect, perfect. That is perfect, perfect. And he just walked it off. Ahmed, Rez or Jake Marisnik. It's Jake Farm Day. Jake Marisnik with the walk-off homer to give Jeff McNeil the home run. And you saw it right here in our primetime stream. Just one of the 40 games across the league tonight. Many of these games with playoff implications. What do you say, chat? How about that? First, it was Cody Bellinger tying it with one out in the third to force extra innings. And then in the fourth inning, Jake Marisnik uh, giving Jeff McNeil the win. Wow. Joe Kelly serves it up. Oh, and we're getting the postgame treatment for Jake Marisnik. So a big win there for Jeff McNeil. He's always been putting up some good numbers in his stream. Mets fans coming in strong for, uh, for the Jeff McNeil streams uh, here during uh, MLB The Show 20 Players League. That's a big All win. Right, so right. That's a big win. That is. So that's going to put uh, Gavin Lux... That's going to drop him to 18 and 8, and it's going to put Jeff McNeil at 18 and 8. So they're going to be in a virtual tie. But as I said, they're kind of in the middle of the pack. Gallo and Snell are in. The only thing left to be decided between those two is who's going to get the top seed. Uh, the regular season, remember, will wrap up on Wednesday with a special doubleheader on ESPN2. So two more games after tonight left in the regular season. And then it's the playoffs, quarterfinals, semifinals, best of three, and our championship series will be a best of five. All right, All right so Robert, Jeff, we McNeil. got another guest uh, stepping up. Right. Let me bring him in. All right, what do we got? We got Duke. John Duplantier. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing well yourself. Not bad. Uh, you played Blake Snell. Uh, I saw he I jumped out to a big, big lead. How, how did that end up finishing? We ended up 7-3. Um, I ended up getting okay. a, a, hitting a homer with uh, Eduardo Escobar to knock the lead down. A little, man, bad some bad luck. 
<laughs> uh, Blake Snell is is one of the favorites, really, to win it all by how well he's been playing. What are your impressions of playing of of uh, Blake and and kind of his skill level right now? Dude's swinging it, you know. Um, he he jumped out on me pretty quick. Uh, he he was swinging the bat pretty well. And also, like, I feel like just as a team, if there's a team set up for a three inning game, it's the Rays. They're solid. Yeah, yeah. That bullpen. I mean, look in real life, the Rays bullpen is a big time weapon. But also in that in this game, despite them not having really any gold cards in that pen. The silvers and bronze, they bring heat and they bring velocity. Hey, John, let me ask you, what have been your impressions of your uh, participation here in the Players League? What have you enjoyed about it so far? This has been a blast. This has been a blast. Um, I, I didn't know what I was going to think. I didn't know what to think about uh, initially, but um, getting in it, actually playing, and needing to be able to talk to some guys and do stuff like this and interact with the fans, you know, like, it's cool. Um it's cool. I know. I think haters said stuff like, "Hey, man, let's keep this going." Like, I may be down for real. Yeah. Um, so this yeah. has been nice. I love that idea. I love the idea. Look, I know you guys are. Uh, when, when your day job is a very difficult one, there are very demanding time constraints <laughs> with, with your job. But uh, we all know that. But yes, I, I agree with you. I would love to see another form of this carry on because I think really, John, that the fans have also responded to you i know that the i know the fans enjoy getting a chance to ask you questions and and i think the players also enjoyed that uh, enjoy that give and take as well no doubt no doubt i mean right now i, had a, I in, in the stream i had a friend uh, a fan say hey you got a new fan from mexico you know i've never been to mexico um <laughs> but like that that in itself that was just that was just cool to me like one person in mexico knows who i am and like is a fan of mine like hey my, my day's been made so um yeah we can just keep little things like that going. I mean, the game gets to grow, air, you know, just get spread spread a little love here and there. Hey, let me ask yeah. you a baseball question. I think I asked it to you in, in one of the previous streams, but I thought the answer is – I think the answer is so good that it, it's maybe for people that didn't get a chance to uh, hear it. Uh, what's it like to play for Tori Lovello, and, uh, you, you know, what has he meant to the – kind of the early stages of your career? Playing for Tory is it's a it's a blessing. Um, you hear stories about um, finally you hear stories about getting called up and playing for managers or even in other sports. You hear about these just hard nosed old school coaches um, that really make it tough on on young guys. You know, um, it's a it's a sink or swim type of environment, but in the worst way, not in a great way. You know, Tory provides an environment where. The young guys like myself, um, Zach Gallon, Alex Young, uh, all of us, we just, we felt like, we feel like we're heard. Um, he makes a yeah. point to come and get to know us. You know, he, he walks around during BP every day, you know, and he talks to somebody. He may not talk to you every, every day, to somebody, and he's going to come say, hey, um, which means a lot, especially when a lot of baseball, especially early in your career, it's about like feeling like you belong, right? Like. You're earning your stripes. You feel you want to feel like I'm supposed to be here, and Tori makes you feel like you're supposed to be there. Um, yeah. The, and on top of that, he also kind of he challenges you. I mean, I, I've been challenged by Tori multiple times. You know, um, where it's been like, "Hey, dude, I think that this," and it's like, "I don't. I hope it's not this, but I think this, and this is what it looks like." And hey, we need to fix that. You got it, Tori. All right, let's go. You know, so. Best of both worlds. I've loved it so far. Yeah. Here we're watching Jeff McNeil take on Cole Tucker. Remember, you just saw McNeil walk off uh, Gavin Lux of the Dodgers. So Jeff is right back at it looking for another win. He went three up, three down. Now Cole Tucker is batting in the bottom of the first. Uh, John, how do you feel like your skills have progressed as the league has gone on? Greatly. Um, my, my plate discipline has gotten a lot better. It didn't snow. He threw a lot of changeups down the zone that just fooled me. But, I mean, I'm, I'm learning to take pitches. Uh, I'm learning to – I'm timing – my timing's better when I'm hitting. Um, so, I mean, this like at the game myself, I'm getting better. Um, it makes yeah. me kind of want to get into Diamond Dynasty and, and maybe a little bit yeah. more. I've, I've got some requests. Yeah, I'm, think, I'm really thinking about it. So, you should, we may man. do that. You should play – Play a little battle royale, three inning games similar to this, or yeah. very similar to this format. 
Um, I, I really think that you would uh, you would enjoy it. Um, here we see Bo Bichette has opened up a 5 nothing lead on Ty Buttry and the Angels still batting in the top of the second, two outs. Uh, Bo Bichette, he is comf- he has a comfortable he's in a comfortable position right now. 19 and 7 yeah. going in. He's behind Blake Snell. Uh, Bo Bichette has been w- one of the really good players in this league, uh, John. Oh yeah, he got me pretty good. He got me pretty good. Yeah, no. He, I mean, the thing is, it's crazy. It's like you can tell. You can you can sometimes tell between posi- position players and pitchers, and how one how they swing the bat in this game, and also right like. Yeah. I was playing against um, Carlos Santana, and he it was like he was pitching me, like he was actually pitching a position player, and he goes, "Okay, this would work, work in real life." Trying to tunnel fastballs and changeups and <laughs> sliders, and it was like. Oh man, like this dude's actually out here pitching, you know. And then, I mean, you guys, yeah. guys like me and some other pitchers who are just swinging out of our shoes every chance we get. It's like, oh, now that looks good. It's hack. Bo's taking yeah. pitches. You know what I mean? Like, it's 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 cool to see that. Well, here we're back at Dodger Stadium. Gavin Lux finds himself trailing to Tommy Canley in the New York Yankees, three to nothing. I love it. Now, yeah, these are two lineups, John, because of. There's diamonds everywhere on all, both of these teams. Yeah. That if Lux and Canley can get hot on the sticks, I mean, these are two lineups that could win it all. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. You know, you see, there's a lot of juice in those lineups. I mean, Lux jumped onto me pretty early in our game. I got I got four. Had a, had a walk off against the uh, against the Dodgers. Uh, clutch Carson came in in super clutch for me, but it was one of those things. Where it was like, all right, you're really r- trying to ride the edges against this lineup in this game. Yeah. Well, uh, mm-hmm. Lux does have the leadoff runner on first as Max Muncy was able to beat the shift. So Lux now has Jock Peterson at the plate facing Zach Britton. And that misses. It's 2-0. and oh. Once again, Tommy Canely. And uh, or Tommy Canely is one of those players that's in that log jam for fighting for that eighth and final playoff spot. They're kind of in that 6, 7, 8, 9 range. Canely coming into tonight, 17 and 8. Dwight Smith Jr., Lucas Giolito, right now rounding out our final uh, or our last of the top eight players. Mm -hmm. That could be two, and it's not. So the runner is able to beat the throw at first. Inning remains alive, still 3 0 Tommy Canely on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, John, what have you been doing to uh, try to stay sharp during this time away? Oh, the weather been fortunate. The weather in Houston has been pretty good. Um, it's actually, I think, I think it's hotter in Arizona than it is in Houston right now. So being able to get outdoors, um, being able to still go and work out and stuff like that, you know, keep the body moving, feels great. Um, and then just stuff to keep your mind sharp. You know, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying this this game necessarily makes you a better baseball player, but like being able to be yeah. in situations, just keep your baseball IQ going. Um, no matter how yeah. little you think it is, like just just keeping the competitive juices going. That's, that's... Well, if oh, yeah. Bo Bichette and we we saw him, uh, we checked in in his game and ju- just a few seconds ago, and he was up five to nothing. If he goes on to win, then Bo Bichette has officially clinched a playoff spot. He that would put him in that three seed, and it looks like he just went deep as we go back to <laughs> Anaheim. And yes, he What's just. New? went deep so he is opening up a big lead on ty buttry and the los angeles angels and he's looking for more batting in the top of the third it's already eight to nothing there in anaheim john you you mentioned something about um about this game trying to keep it keep your mind sharp uh lucas giolito i i think has said that he has used this game in the past to try to implement what his scouting report be against his upcoming opponent. Do you, uh, could you see that that working? Yeah. Is that something that you would consider trying? I, I would, I would be interested to see how, how well that plays. Um, Because I mean, this thing is this game, like it depends on how well the game matches up in real life. Right. Like, I mean, the game is just a bunch of ones and zeros and it's statistics and odds, you know? So I could definitely see that working. Um, yeah. or at least giving somebody a good outline. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, I could, he, I could, I could I, see I that. He said that he would put it on rookie mode. 
Yeah, he, he, he said he would play <laughs> it on success. Mickey Moon. I love that. Yeah, so he was uh, assured that he would be su successful. Robert, so. we got a new guest. Let's bring him in. Sweet. Okay. All right. Got Dwight Smith Jr. Hey, Dwight Smith Jr. How you doing, man? Good. How are y'all? Doing great. Uh, Dwight, you're, you're in that playoff mix. We're here with uh, John Duplantier of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Dwight, you've uh, you're in the in the hunt for that playoff picture. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, I feel like I finished the last day pretty strong. Um, I'm in a good spot, so we're going to see what happens. I don't know what's going on, what's the standings right now, but I saw it was close. Dwight, we've talked about, and, and you have talked about, that your patience as at the plate has been a big key for you. And I think that some of our players that are listening and watching in the, in the chat – that patience at the plate is something that we all kind of struggle with at some point. Can you elaborate a little bit about how patience at the plate has really served you well in this league? Um, yeah, you, you got to be patient. You just got to wait on the pitch you're looking for in that game. Just, it's kind of like real life. So you ain't just going to swing at a pitch on the black every time. You just got to wait for uh, um, the pitcher to make a mistake, and that's all I was waiting on the whole time. Um. Dwight, what have been the uh, the best things about the the fan interaction? I know Oriole fans have been uh, showing you a lot of love and support in your streams. Uh, what has that fan interaction been like for you? Oh, the fan the fan interaction has been awesome. The fans been like catching on every phrase I say. They 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 got along with the boom boom room. It might become a thing once the season starts, but I don't know. But. Uh, <laughs> It's, the fans have been great. Like, they've been holding on to every moment, and I, I'm just glad to put on a show for them and just some, give them something to enjoy during this time. Uh, well, here we're taking a peek at Trevor May and Blake Snell, uh, and Trevor has jumped out to a 3 nothing lead on Blake Snell at the trop, 3 nothing, top of the second, Tyler Duffy against, against G-Man Choi. Uh, oh, and it looks like G-Man just went he deep. Just that out. <laughs> he uh -huh. did. He went. Oh, oh. not my dog. <laughs> Off Tyler oh, Duffy, so the lead tough. is down to two. Uh, Dwight, what have been? Uh, what was it like uh, to play Blake? And uh, how would you assess his chances of uh, possibly going all the way? Um, playing Blake, I actually jumped out to like a like a quick lead, but then he just started squaring everything up, laying off of pitches. He, he can definitely hit in the game, that's for sure. He's a dangerous opponent. <laughs> All right, so there's uh, there we are at the trop, and that's going to be grounded out to first. Uh, Dwight, what have you been doing uh, to uh, keep in shape and stay sharp during this time away? Uh, I've actually been working out in my garage. I really haven't done that since high school. And just throwing my dad in the front, front of the house, <laughs> hitting, in the, hitting in the cage whenever I can. So I've been doing pretty much what I would do in the offseason. Yeah. Now, uh, your, your dad played in the big leagues. Uh, what has he meant to your, to your journey, and what are some of the things that he has imparted to you? Uh, he's, he's been everything to me um, on and off the field. He's been like a best friend, a dad, a, a coach, all in one. So – He's he's been he's been there every step of the way for me, so I can't thank him enough for that. Yeah, and John, what about you? What who who have been some of your uh, your biggest influences? As uh, I think Blake just went deep again. It's now three. Oh, Who've God. been some of your biggest, your biggest he, influences, John? Um, you know, my dad didn't play baseball, but um, my dad has actually been huge for me just because he he thinks so clearly, right? So, um he's able to kind of slow me down in a lot of situations and, and really let me see the situations for what they are. Um, uh, I've had some older guys that I've just been fortunate to kind of play with um, since I got called up. I mean, Adam Jones has been awesome for me. Uh, do you play with, you play with Jonesy, Dwight? Yeah. No, so, I was actually uh, in Toronto before um, I played against him. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we had Jonesy last year when I got, when I got up and Jonesy's great. Um, Taiwan Walker was great for me last year. Um, and then the guys we got on the team, really. So kind of still trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. But, like, my dad's been huge for me. Dwight, uh, John and Josh Hader, 
hinted that they would be down for this league continuing in some form or fashion uh, down the road. Mm-hmm. What about you? Oh, I'll, I'll definitely be down for that. This <laughs> this league's been fun. Uh, I've I've had a I've had a lot of joy playing all the guys and seeing how they see what they um game on the sticks. So I'm always down for that. All right, so a change, uh, a call to the bullpen for Trevor May. He is still leading three to two, but two homers have cut that lead to one. This is Kevin Kiermeyer swinging and missing on a high fastball. This question for both of you, the nature of Major League Baseball, you play every day. There is so much failure that is associated with this game. Uh, how, do you got, how do you guys keep it together? How do you stay focused? And more importantly, how do you turn things around when things aren't going well? You first, White. Um, I'll just take it as like every pitch like is different. Every moment is different. So um, if, if you fail at one moment, there's, there's going to be plenty of other moments in 162 games. So I wouldn't get that too down on yourself if, if you go through those bumps and bruises. And then don't get too high on the highs when you're going good. So you can always get better. That's the way I take it day by day. What about you? What about you, John? Yeah. So to piggyback off of that, like he was talking about not getting too high on the highs and too lows on the lows, you know, like trying to find this, this neutral that you can kind of ride and like, you can get a little bit up on that, a little bit down because that's, that's human, but um, trying to limit the peaks and valleys um, has been huge. Ooh, and then also safe. kind of just realize that there's so much, there is so much failure in this Failing in one moment does not yeah. correlate with failing in the next, right? Like you can just you can pack that up and forget it, you know. Um, it's just that, that that being able to be in the moment, being present, and then just attacking it. And and you're oh, John, you're a pitcher, gonna... right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so pitching is different from being a position player because we used to oh, play no, every no. day, and pitchers like y'all every starting pitch every fifth day, and relievers like. You never know when y'all can come in, so everybody's sure. have a different mentality. All right, no so Trevor May is able to get out of the inning, still leading three to two. Trevor needs to basically win out and needs a lot of help to get back into that playoff picture, but he's kind of on the periphery. Hey, John, we're going to let you go. Uh, thanks for stopping in, Ooh. man. It was great to uh, catch up with you uh, throughout this league. And uh, good luck the rest of the way. Hopefully you're back playing baseball very soon. Cool. Thank you. All right, y'all take it easy. You got it. All right, it. you too. All right, let's stay here hold with on, uh, Dwight. Dwight. Hold on, Dwight. Hold on, Dwight. We want to talk to you some more. We want to talk to you yeah. some more. Hang on. Uh, this, as you we're taking a peek at Bo Bichette, he is now in the playoffs. He's won two games. He just beat Ty Buttery. Now he's taking on Matt Carpenter of the St. Louis Cardinals. But Bo Bichette – is in the playoffs. Uh, Dwight, how, how much did you, how much or how familiar were you with MLB The Show before this league started? Um, I was pretty familiar with it ever since I bought my um, PlayStation like like years ago, like um, I want to say about 2014. So I've been playing the show pretty much since then. And it was like the only yeah. baseball game out. So I was like, I got to play a baseball game. And I remember... One of my buddies, um, Reggie McLean, with the Phillies now, uh, he would he when I first started, he whooped my butt, like put like eleven runs up on me, like in three innings. I was like, all right, I gotta learn this, play this game. So I just learned from there. I just kept playing it ever since. All right, we can tell you that Jeff McNeil has beaten Cole Tucker five nothing. Tommy Canley just beat. Gavin Lux, three to nothing. So that's two straight wow. losses for Gavin Lux. Big win for Tommy Canley. Uh, and wow. Joey Gallo lost six to five. Wow, that's a surprising, that's a surprising result. Who do you to? Uh, uh, let me see. Colin, do you have that? I don't. Yo, Ian Happ. Ian Happ has now won seven in a row. So Ian Happ wow. beats Joey Gallo. Six to five, that's a big win for Ian Happ. Wow, jeez. But uh, Joey Gallo has already clinched a playoff spot. Hey, Dwight, like most of us uh, that play this game, we love opening packs, right? Um, Mm -hmm. You love opening packs as well, especially when you stream. 
How is your pack luck, and uh, have you pulled any good cards recently? Um, my pack luck was was kind of like below average, but I did draw a diamond John Franco, so I got that, and then I sold that. I got a, got a couple Taylor Roger cards. Um, I think I got a Starlin Marte in there, so I got a, I got a lot of cards, and I flipped them, and I got end up getting like a Christian Yelich. End up getting him on my there team, and then I got Harper. So I I got a couple lefties now. Well, check this out, Dwight. I was streaming about a month ago, and during my stream, I was opening up some packs. Normally, my pack luck is trash, but I pulled <laughs> a Mike. I pulled the big wow. giant oh. white whale Mike wow. Trout. That's the one you want. That's so hard to do. I've never, and I've, I've actually had friends that has drawn like two in packs. So I'm like, how? I want this, want this trout card so bad. Did you end up selling it or you kept it? No, I kept it. And he's in my Diamond Dynasty team right now. It's uh, Trout, Mantle, and Yelich in my outfield. Uh, the Yelich card, I mean, look, you, you said you have him. It, it, even though it's a diamond, I feel like it plays above its stats. That card just rakes. Yeah and does damage yeah. all the time. There's a perfect yeah, perfect car. perfect from Boba Jet. Uh how is your Diamond Dynasty team, Dwight? Um my Diamond Dynasty team is pretty pretty solid. I got a lot of them uh team affinity players on my team and a couple guys from the markets. It's, it's pretty much all diamond pretty much right now. Except for like a couple goals that I like like Nelson Cruz. And um, Giancarlo, I got some big bats on my teams. You never know you would need that one run. That's right. That's right. Well, here, uh, <laughs> Bo Bichette threatened in the second inning against Matt Carpenter. Uh, first and second, no one out. So a real-life baseball question, Dwight, and we talked about it earlier. The, the Baltimore Orioles, they're in, a, uh, they're in a different phase right now of their franchise. They're on the trying to build to something uh, special there in, in Baltimore. Uh, what's it like being a part of that clubhouse? What's it like being a part of that organization right now? Um, it's it's awesome right now because everybody's trying to go the same direction, and a lot of guys are out there trying to prove themselves. So it's a lot of us are alike in that locker room, and it's it's pretty fun to watch when you see us play. All right, so it's uh, no score here. Now, uh, Ian Happ, Dwight, I, I mentioned the big win. For, mm -hmm. uh, for him against Joey Gallo, there is a chance that he could he could bump some people, including yourself, in that uh, for that race yeah. for the eighth spot. You got to keep an eye out on Ian Happ, huh? Wow, yeah, he he was pretty tough. I I actually had to come back on him, and uh, one of the, in the one game we played, and he was he was tough. I ended up getting jumping out to a lead early, and then he tried. He almost came back, but that's a dangerous team too. There's so many stacked teams, I feel like, in this game that you can't sleep on any team. Well, I, I think what you have done is we're back here at Tropicana Field. Uh, Blake Snell has the tying run at third, two outs, Mike Zanino, mm. Sergio Romo on the hill for Trevor May. Oh, and Zanino, Z. perfect. Oh, oh, wow. Robert, we got another, oh, yeah. oh, we got another card Not trader perfect, joining us. Perfect line out. Come on, man. Oh, wow. oh, man. We're joined by Hunter Pence. Gee. What's Hunter, up? Hunter, did you, did you see what happened there what up? with Blake? No, I, I didn't see it. I didn't see what happened. All right. Line so he out. has the time the third. He's got Mike Zanino at the plate, and he hits – Zanino gets a perfect perfect, but he ends up lining out to, to left to oh. end the game. Oh, I hate to see it happen. You hate to see it happen. <laughs> I don't know if we're, I know I'm out of the playoffs, but I just had one of the biggest heartbreaks of all time. I gotta I gotta wow. give it up for Stanek. I was throwing a no hitter, <laughs> two outs, up one nothing, and it fouls off like six pitches. Uh, I'm trying to throw a slider in the dirt with Maranta. He throws it right down the middle, Homer to tie. Next Ooh. guy, zero and two, like. All sorts of balls falling off, falling off. Try to throw another change up in the dirt. Hangs it. Walk off. Back to back jacks. Like nasty. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. 
This league has been insane. It's been so much heartbreak. Hey, hey send that again, Snell. Sorry about that. I was talking. It's been so much heartbreak, but it's been the it's been such an awesome time. Like I, I've been appreciating getting to play against everyone. I feel like I know all the players better than I did before. All the everyone that's joined the league. It's been just a cool experience. Well, we're uh, taking a peek here, a live look at Lucas Giolito's stream. He's taking on Juan Soto, and you see Soto has just beaten him three to one. You know, uh, oh. Hunter, I feel like Juan Soto has had some good wins in this league. I feel like I see, every time I see him, he's hitting tanks. He's had some good wins, but I, I think he needs some help to get into the playoffs. Is that right? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's <laughs> everything. Yeah. So there's uh, I snuck a victory weird. off on him. What what was that score? Do you remember? It was like 2 to 1 or something. Like he he scored a run cuz I threw a ball into the stands. It was, it was a close game. Like I've been I must be like better at pitching than hitting obviously cuz like I look at everyone's <laughs> ERA and I'm actually up there in ERA like doing pitching pretty good. Uh yeah. offensively not so good. <laughs> Dude, well, uh, you rake by the way your at bats are so frustrating like <laughs> like you we don't swing at anything that that's a ball no no okay you can't <laughs> it's 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 impressive oh and i'm, I'm live now i'm back playing oh okay uh who do you who are you up against right now the snellzilla oh, wow, man the one and only nine in a row Oh okay. my. All right. So he's one of the now is gonna have some extra motivation. Uh, be sure to check out uh, you can go to twitch.tv slash hunter pence to check out that stream. Again, open up those tabs, keep us locked here, flip 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 back and forth. We're underway. Giants and rays. Oh, barehanded scoop. Got him at first. Good squared up by myself. Get out of here, ball. Yeah. yeah. Dwight, thank you oh, so much for joining us tonight. Uh, HP Homer with HP. Got a lot. Way to go, HP. Give me some daps, dude. <laughs> I should have R2'd it or whatever. Dwight, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thanks we a totally lot, Dwight. enjoyed watching you during the league. All right. Uh, Baby, uh, let's go. Back to back. <laughs> well, I we appreciate need, it. We need to get you and Hunter to play against each other in some DD sometime. Yeah, dog. Oh, yeah, dude, what's your ranking in, D in, in Diamond Dynasty, Dwight? Um, I'm like in the six, seven hundreds right now. I, oh I've my gosh! Playing dude. Diamond Dynasty since like I, I started this tournament, but I was up there what before you, I stopped. What are you doing for practice then, bro? I literally like, how like, do you practice? I play it here and there. I play Diamond Dynasty. Like I play against like Cy Young and like all them <laughs> goons in the game. And I'll okay. literally just play Diamond Dynasty or like Battle Royale. That's another one. <laughs> Games. Um, yeah, I'll just play really good pitching. Yeah. Okay. So you you play against harder pitching because sometimes I get used to that timing, and then this league is a little bit slower, so it confuses me yeah. a little. Yeah. I, I'll do. I also play somebody with my team on the same settings as the league, just because it's because like the okay. and stuff is so slow. And like, yeah, I normally play on like All Star, or like Hall of Fame, which is like way faster. This might be my best offensive inning of all time. Snell, are you there? <laughs> oh, he's there. He, he's there. there. You hear no him? I see the him. Call. No, he's he's not in here. He's we're oh, watching his. Stream. I see him though. Yeah, yeah, you see him. Oh, okay. Uh oh, you just hit another three, homer. Another homer. I got three, three jacks in this inning. I think I have what three homers the entire league. What are you talking about? You're hitting just fine right now. This is the best I've ever done. Do I, I need to talk to you more, man? <laughs> Keep talking to me, bro. <laughs> the black and orange. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so a big lead for Hunter Pence, and he's still batting in the top of the first. Oh, my goodness. Well, Wilmer well, Flores is just a ball player. Uh, Dwight, we were going to say goodbye, uh, but I think Hunter wants you to stay. No, no, no. So that was my last out. That was my last out, Dwight. I'll let you get out of here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Dwight, appreciate it so though. much, man. Good luck in the Thanks playoffs, so too. I appreciate it. You're great, man. I'll be watching it for sure. Hold on. You cut out. What would you say? Oh, I don't you have my out. light on. I'll be watching it for sure. All right. <laughs> Any...
Any pointers? Any tips? Keep being you, man. Don't swing. Don't swing it at the bad ones. Don't swing at a bad one. All right, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> keep that patience, man. It's draining. <laughs> it's draining. You throw all these good pitches, like, and you just take them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> cool. Thanks, right, Dwight. Man. Thank you so much. Have a great Thank night, you, Dwight. Dwight Smith of the Baltimore Orioles, and you see Blake Snell now batting in the bottom of the first. Taking on All right. Hunter. We're at a Homer Fest. Three nothing, or three runs in the first. Oh boy. And the lead is now cut down to two. All right. AOE wants some more scores in the chat. Here we go. Let's get some more scores going. Uh, Matt Carpenter is now three to two in the bottom of the second on Boba Shett. Jeff McNeil, looking for his third straight win of the night, is up two to one on David Dahl in the second. And Lucas Giolito, um, you saw him lose to Juan Soto. And uh, w Trevor May, who beat Blake Snell before Snell's game against here against Hunter Pence, with that win, Trevor May is now just a game and a half out of the final playoff spot. So. There's a lot of competition for that eighth spot. A whole bunch of teams battling for just one or two spots right now. Here it's three to one at the trop. Blake Snell trying to avoid his second consecutive loss. And back here at Coors Field, this is Jeff McNeil looking to close out David Dahl. Pete Alonso at the plate. What a rookie season for Alonzo. A National League home run record, and he goes opposite field at Coors. It's now 4-2. to two. The Polar Bear. Hunter, you've been one of our favorite streamers. We really appreciate everything you've done. What has been your favorite thing about the Players League? Uh, just uh, getting to meet everybody, and, and honestly, just... I got fallen in love with this game because of this, and like it's a it makes you feel like you're playing baseball. The game's amazing, and there's a connection and a bond that uh, we've built with all of the players in this league. It's it's just really cool to be a part of. Here, Robinson Cano sends one to second. By the way, uh, Jeff McNeil has clinched a playoff spot, so he has clinched a playoff spot. No matter what happens in this game against David Dahl, at, uh, even though he's leading 4-2 to two and sends another base hit the other way. And Hunter Pence is spending time with us here as he takes on Blake Snell. Need to check on, the, need to check on Hunter's twitch.tv slash Hunter Pence. Twitch.tv slash classically famous. Here we go. All right. Dude, Snell is not down the line. So Jeff McNeil coming into the playoffs in the postseason on a on a high note. He is playing extremely well. And he's hitting well with Ahmed Rosario. All right, we're back at the trap. This game is now tied at three. Blake Snell answered with a three spot of his own in the bottom of the first, and he's now looking for more. All right, fly ball to center is caught. We got it out. We got it out. For out number one. Wow. Yep, Hunter's time to check out that bullpen. And you've been using this Melvin Adon card quite a bit, Hunter, in the league, in league play. I, I have, actually. It's, uh, I mean, he throws cheddar. He doesn't have much control, but he's got nasty stuff. Well, not nasty well, enough. That that's that's nasty, all right. But it's a uh, it's a home run for Blake. So four unanswered runs for Blake Snell. I mean, that's like not even a bad pitch. He's just good. Yeah, he he went down and got that. It's five to three. Blake Snell on Hunter Pence. Remember, Hunter hit three home runs in the top of the first. But Blake has come roaring back. This is Kevin Kiermeyer. 
Oh, that's a good pitch there. Nearly painted. Cover the bag. Oh, off Cover the glove the of Brandon Belt. Can he beat him? No. Wow. You're going to have to have a chat with Brandon Belt. No, with the Don, he needs to cover the bag. Right? Oh, good point. Good point. All right, here's Yandy Diaz. Boy, a long first inning. Already the second pitcher in the inning for Pence. Fernando Tatis Jr., who is on that playoff bubble, he's losing to Reese Hoskins right now, six to nothing. Oh, my. You see Ty Buttry and Tommy Canely. Canely is hoping to get a playoff spot. That game is going to be upcoming soon. Here at the Trop, it's two outs, top of the first. Now, is he going to bring in a pinch hitter for Chirinos? And it looks like he will. Oh, no, he won't. He's going to stay with Chirinos. So, yeah, he, he's, he's okay. He's going to a pinch hitter. Joey Wendell is the pinch, hit, pinch hitter. And he serves that one to right. Blake, Blake I watch is on one, man. He, Hunter, Blake is on one. He is tough to get out. There we go. All right. We got out of the inning eventually. <laughs> that will end the inning, but a big one for Blake Snell as he scores five and now leads five to three. Remember, the regular season will wrap up on Wednesday with a doubleheader on ESPN2. That comes your way at 10 o'clock Eastern. A I need Dwight Smith Jr. back 100%. <laughs> You want, you want us to give him a call, see if he can join the stream, give you some more luck? <laughs> yes, hold on. Hold on one second. I got to – I don't have my IT with me. There we go. I was too bright. There you go. There we go. All right. Here now we're ready to hit. Crawford. Oof. Remember, top eight teams, top eight players get into the postseason. Quarters and semifinals are a best of three, and our championship series will be a best of five. Blake Snell has already clinched a playoff spot. He clinched one. He clinched it before the night began. He and Joey Gallo atop the league standings. Woof. How about Diego Castillo throwing a sinker at 100 miles per hour? Yeah, I love him in the in the Battle Royale. He's nasty. Oof. All right, we can tell you that Class on a. the bubble right now, Giolito, May, Amir Garrett, and Fernando Tatis Jr. are all a game back of that final playoff spot. So the bubble is crowded for the eighth and final playoff spot. Oh, down the line, that's fair. There you go. Blake, I haven't uh, – I'm sorry, Hunter. I haven't seen you hit like this all, all season. It's definitely the best I've hit. Small ball. It's Small definitely ball. the best I've hit. So now Hunter is threatening here in the top of the second. Got a lot of giant fans in your in your uh, in your chat, Hunter. Hell, heck yeah, the Giants Nation, baby, staying strong, keeping me encouraged after that loud, that that heartbreaker game one today. Whoo! All right, virtual Hunter Pence now at the plate. And I a virtual HP. We are uh, I'm patching in another guest here. Give me a second. Okay. All right, so base is loaded. No one out. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, we are joined oh, by David Dole. Oh, wow. Wow, that's going to be deep enough to score a run. I thought you had a grand slam. And joining us now from the Colorado Rockies is David Dahl. David, how are you, man? 
Uh, I'm doing well. Um, just got dominated again, but uh, I'm doing well. Um, um, just got dominated again, but oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, kind of at a loss for words. I've lost like ten or eleven straight. Well, I, you know what? I, I I know how frustrating that can be, but uh, despite all that, what what has been your impressions of uh, of the league so far? Uh, it was really fun. Uh, it was a good time getting on, playing against other guys in the league. I uh, wish I was a little better, uh, won some more games for, for the fans out there, but uh, it is what it is. But I had a good time. Yeah. Um, it, you know, maybe you'll get a chance to uh, continue to keep playing, and, and would you be up for if, if this league continued in some form or fashion? Would you be up for that? Yeah, I would play. Uh, I don't know if you got if the Rockies would want to get someone a little yeah, better than play. me, but I would definitely play it again. <laughs> well, I, I think you've you've had a good attitude, and and you mentioned the the, the fans, and um, I know the fans have really enjoyed just getting a chance to ask you guys questions, and have really enjoyed the back and forth. Uh, what have been your impressions of of that aspect of this whole event? Yeah, they definitely seem to enjoy it. Um, all, uh, they all were telling me what yeah, to do, though, so it was kind of getting frustrating when everyone was talking all, about telling me, telling me how to hit on this thing. And, uh, <laughs> but it was, it was fun interacting with them and listening to their com- looking at their comments and everything. Uh, it, was, it was fun interacting with them. Wait, wait a minute, David. Are, are you telling me that, that the chat was giving you ideas and thought that they had answers to everything? That does not sound like any chat I know. What's going on? Happens for everyone. <laughs> hey, doll, I feel your pain, though, man. It, this game is stressful and it's tough, especially when you when you're taking some tough L's. I just hit a perfect, yeah. perfect fly ball with nobody out and the bases loaded and got a triple play because I was like listening in here and the running. I don't. I didn't even push a button and they just all went. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I mean, uh, Snell, you, you beat me so bad. I just started drilling all your players. Yeah, I think uh, Snell. <laughs> Snell did. So bad, I just- no, me well, and no, you I had like an extra out. inning. It was like fifteen to nothing. No, I me and you had an extra inning game. Yeah, we we had a close one. That was a that was a tough loss that I had on that one. Yeah. We were that we were just, all throwing balls took, around and stuff. I took Nolan out uh, to pinch run Hilliard, and then I got a hit and scored him. So that was actually that looked like a good move for me there. <laughs> and that, yeah, it was kind of clutch. Did you ever? Did he ever come back up? I forget. No, he ended up not coming up. You, I think you walked it off the next inning or two innings later. No, he ended up not coming up. You, I think you walked it off the next inning or two innings later. David, uh, I, I saw that game that you had with Blake, and uh, things did get chippy there at the <laughs> there at the end. I think your your player your your pitcher got run. <laughs> yeah, I kept. Uh, I figured if I'm gonna lose this bad, I might as well get something going yeah, here. Uh, get a little drama. See if, if we can get someone this, thrown out. Might as well get something going Definitely here. worked. Uh, I was going through pitchers. See if we can get someone thrown out. You sure Definitely did. <laughs> you sure did. Oh my goodness. Uh, all right, so it's five four. Snell trying to close out Pence in the hold on, Robert. Did inning. you see my triple play? I'm just curious. Did we hear you, about this? You know what? I, I thought I thought that you had tagged successfully because I, I looked away and saw that it was caught at the wall, and I you know turned to look at David to ask him a question. I I, I was I must say I, I was oblivious to all of that. You were doubled up, or it yeah. was a triple play. Triple play on a perfect perfect fly ball, not line drive, from my three hole hitter. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's the worst. That's life. That happens. Hey, but we're coming back. We're rallying back, chat. We're rallying back. No outs. He's threatening. Got the time It's my own running. fault for not paying attention to the base running, though. Dahl, did you do – was the base running a problem for you, or did you figure that out pretty good? No, uh, I got better as the thing went on. I was more – I was terrible. I like, it didn't let Nolan long. get to anything. I was, was kind of upset about that. Terrible, like, Right? Yeah, you get a little. Kind of it, it can, especially because he's like one of the best defensive third basemen all time. I haven't played with him. I want his card so bad. Yeah. Good card. Yeah, it, I, I mean, for me, the defense is the toughest player. Yeah, like, I felt like. Card. 
I yeah. thought for me the defense was the toughest part. Like I felt like I felt hey, there was, I felt uh, there was a lot of balls that I should have caught, and then I I would click the wrong button, switch to a different guy, like a guy oh, that I shouldn't man. have swapped to. So that's yeah. That it takes a, a lot part. of practice. I've practiced a lot for this, and really? I'm still kind of messing up a lot. Yeah. Really, David, we're going to uh, let you go, man. And uh, once again, thanks for, uh, first of all, thanks for, for agreeing to participate in the Players League. I know Rocky fans are, uh, we're thrilled to have you, uh, fans uh, getting a chance to ask you questions. Uh, we, we, we hope that you, uh, that you had fun and, and maybe, like you said, if it's down the road, maybe we can do it again. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for having me. I'm going to practice. If we do it, do it again, I'm going to win a little more games. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for having me. I'm All right, practice. man. Stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you back on the field Woo! real soon. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. All right. Meantime, Hunter Pence has come all the way back and tied it. So new ball game at Tropicana Field. Here's Nick Anderson facing Brandon Crawford. We can tell you that Lux and Edwards, no score in the second. So Gavin Lux, who has had a rough night so far, uh, scoreless in the seconds against, against Carl Edwards Jr. of the Seattle Mariners. Uh, Fernando Tatis just lost. He is eliminated. Fernando Tatis Jr. eliminated from playoff contention. Oh, my gosh. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> wow. Wow. What just happened? <laughs> and then that happens. Holy moly. Heads I did not mean to do that. I, I, thought, I was trying to send them back. I was trying to send them back because – and I sent them forward. <laughs> it worked. I don't know how you pulled that off, Hunter. I did not mean to. <laughs> With 13 speed. <laughs> Blake, Blake is going wild right now on his stream. Uh, we can't hear him. Maybe it's a good thing we can't hear I wish hear him. I could hear him. Hold up. Oh, my God. <laughs> You never see you never see it coming. You never see the 13 speed belt coming. That's what <laughs> I was thinking. Like, was invisible. Brandon Belt. How did Brandon Belt That was Belt, belt 13. That? I don't know. It was like Belt and Flores, the slowest guys in the game. Minus Yadi yeah. or Molina and Buster Posey. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have 10 hits. A base, he can't cry because I went bases loaded, perfect, perfect fly ball, triple play. So it's a good he, game either way. Hug, he's got to hug the pooch. Uh, you know, I don't blame him. Hug the pooch. <laughs> get back on track. He has uh, a pooch that he's hugging? I need, I need some of that. Yeah. For yeah. sure. We Luke all need Jackson, to hug the pooch. Luke, uh, Luke Jackson, put that on a T-shirt, everyone. We all need to hug a pooch. Put that on his T-shirt. Uh, Luke Jackson is leading Ian Happ 1-0 in the second. Check that. Ian Happ is now leading Luke Jackson 2-1. to one. So the updates are happening very, very quickly here. But Hunter Pence now three outs away from handing Blake Snell his second consecutive loss. Snell has already clinched a playoff spot, but he had a shot and was hoping to take the top seed from Joey Gallo, who is 23-4. and four. Uh, Joey Gallo is set to play Juan Soto and Ian, Ian Happ. All right. So. I need to clutch up with my pitching one time. I have bad memories, Robert. I have bad memories. No. No! Endless Warrior 2, Ian Happ, his Twitch page can be found. Yeah, don't if you go to MLB slash Players League. There's a link to his Twitch page. It's twitch.tv slash IHAP underscore one. And uh, he has now opened up a 3-1 to lead on Luke Jackson in the second inning. Ian I mean, Happ. It's, it's just not easy. He's a good hitter, chat. Seven in a row. 
Cheesy612, we appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Oh, oh. Here we Hunter, go. where can people find you? Because you're all over the place. <laughs> uh, you can find me in the Giving Up Walk Off Homers Club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two, that's two for the day. But yeah, twitch.tv slash Hunter Pence, Instagram Hunter Pence, Twitter Hunter Pence. Um, also, my, me and my wife, she has a YouTube channel that I'm on all the time. Uh, let's get Lexi. So you can find us there. And uh, yeah, man, that's where you can find me. Wow. Harlan Garcia serves up the walk off homer. Yandy Diaz goes deep. Big homers in the postseason for the Rays and a big homer here for Blake Snell as he comes from behind to win. Blake, you have been involved in some some games that have been weird. Blake's some not games with us, that have Robert. Been... Blake's not with us. So. <laughs> no, Hunter. I said Hunter. Hunter has been involved. Yeah, Hunter, you've been involved in some games that have been close, games that have been weird. This one was weird and close. Yeah, both of my games have been leading into the last inning and then giving up back-to-back -back homers. But, uh, yeah, I've had great games, to be honest. I have a terrible record, but it's been super fun. I've had so many extra inning games. Uh, you know, it, it, it's been wild. They've, they've been really good good fun. And, um, man, it's just it really has been a good time. This, whole, this league has been amazing. Well, here we're taking a live look at Tommy Canley's stream and he's as he's taking on Ty Buttry and the Angels. And Tommy Canley, virtual Canley, is facing virtual Mike Trout with the Angels leading, leading two to one uh, in the top of the third. So Buttry looking for some insurance with, with Mike Trout. Uh, Hunter, have you had a chance to play with the Trout card in this year's game? Oh, Yeah. I have, that, that's what I have the most at bats with. I got started off with the trout card because of the tournament we played in. He was on my team. It's a, a, a just an unbelievable card. I mean, it's it's the I, of all the live series cards, and and look, it's it's not a shock because he is Mike Trout, but the card, I mean, the card delivers, man. It is a I'll tell you, great card. I have better stats with Trout than I do the ninety nine pence that they gifted me. So I mean. Yeah, it's I, you know what card though? Have you played with the Thames, the 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 99 Thames right now? The the Bottle Royale card right now, it's incredible. Is that one is that possible to get for Diamond Dynasty? Now, are you talking about just his live series card where he's on the Nationals or uh no, I'm talking about the the current one in the Battle Royale. You know where they do like their oh. like hot month or whatever? Yes, yes, player of the month Eric Thames. Yes, that it that is a really good card. I played with it. Uh, if it's the one I'm thinking, I've played with it last year or years previous, and uh, that that's a really really good card. And and you're right. It's it's one of those where you see, you know, that uh, when you're drafting in battle royale, if you see that that card's available for you, you go and grab it because you know it's going to do damage. Absolutely, absolutely. So R Robert, what's been your take on this? Have you enjoyed? the craziness and i mean this is this is yeah. the big day right now yeah yeah no it, it's been really it's been really fun um i i've i've enjoyed seeing you guys um th i i think that you guys have enjoyed it more than what you anticipated um i think that the competitive juices have been flowing and i think that you guys uh, have been into it and have enjoyed it maybe a little bit more than you thought. 100%. This is, uh, I'll be honest, I didn't know it was this much, like this long of a, of a tournament where it was like playing so much, but it has been really one of the, like I, we pulled off one of the coolest experiences like that we could have and in, in, in the circumstance that we're in. And um, yeah. I know that the Giants fans have loved it. They've supported me the whole way. They had they didn't get negative, even though we had some, like you said, some tough losses. Uh, I think yeah. my play got a lot better, and like I said, I fell in love with the game. And honestly, the mental feeling of the at bats is so like I wish I knew about this game a long time ago. Like I knew about the game, but I wish that I like played it as much. 
because yeah. it is very similar. Like I'm learning like in, I typically like, there's different ways, like looking heater, looking slider and adjusting from there. But it's a very similar like brain reaction thing to hitting. So I'm like really enjoying it. I feel like it does help keep your rhythm going. Well, here we have at Yankee Stadium, one out. The go-ahead run is at the plate in the form of Aaron Judge. Justin Anderson is on the hill for Ty Buttry of the Angels. And you see Tommy Canely. We're checking in on his stream. And Aaron Judge swinging on a slider. So now he's down to his final out. And remember, Tommy Canely's, I mean, this game has playoff implications. And here comes the undertaker, Hansel Robles for the Angels facing Giancarlo Stanton. Uh, Hunter, you talk about the how this game is similar or has some some qualities that you can draw upon uh, in your real life experience. I think our players really enjoy hearing that aspect of of what kind of skills, what kind of maybe real life skills can you apply to this game and to this league. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like the the PCI, like putting it on is on on the ball is really a, a different and difficult skill. But the rec yeah. pi the timing, the pitch recognition, the high low, the fastball slider movement is it's like a it's a similar trigger of the brain, you know, to fire your swing at the right pitch. Because in, same thing in Major League Baseball, they're throwing balls that look like fastballs that are breaking, and you know they look like strikes, and then they're balls, and they look like they're balls, and then they're strikes. So uh, I do think that that's kind of a that that quick decision making skill is is really it's really helping me with that. And I wish that I had, I think that that will help me as a hitter a lot, actually. I'm, I'm really excited about learning this game now. Robert Hunter, we got well, Maverick going to yeah. join us here. So the Maverick himself okay. wearing blades. All right. Well, Brett, Phillips. Well, Brett Phillips. Let's go. Oh. Hey. Royal. Brett, I feel like you've been one of the breakout stars. I mean, Hunter has, has been a, a, a big member of our streams and has been carrying us. And then here comes Brett Phillips with, with dual ear flaps. I mean, or, you know, I, I love where your head's at. Hey, shout out to uh, MILB. You know, never forget where you came from. Eight seasons in the minors. <laughs> we we, uh, we stick to where we came from. But, uh, no, it's been fun. It's been a great time. This, Like Hunter said, I've, I've been listening in. Um, MLB, the show, the Players Association, they've done a – Hold on. We're bringing him right back. Oh, we're lost. Oh, no, we lost them. We lost them for a second. Now we'll bring them back. Did, the, did Here, that Yankees game finish, by the way? Yeah, Ty Buttry gets a big win over Tommy Canely. Uh, remember, Canely's fighting for a playoff spot. Here at the Trop, Jeff McNeil has a double with two outs in the top of the first. Now we're back here. Brett, sorry Brett about that. We had wow, that was not on my end either. That was me. Like that, was, that was That was me. <laughs> that was control room Colin. That was me. Uh, Protecting Brett, us. I, I can't imagine that there is anyone that has enjoyed this league and enjoyed this experience more than you have. Yeah, you know, like I was saying, I, I, I enjoy stuff like this in general. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're entertainers, not only on the field, but off the field. And I think we have a duty as baseball players with the platform we have to, uh, to do, do stuff like this. I know Hunter, uh, enjoys this stuff i've watched his streams before uh whether it's it's playing baseball or, or doing a, a card stream I, I like that kind of stuff but uh they want to see personality they they don't want to just see us on the field fans want to root for a guy they know and and the, yeah. and the personality that they, they have you know well uh right now twitch.tv slash brett phillips that is the twitch page for brett phillips and it looks like Blake Snell has opened up a lead on Noah Syndergaard and the New York Mets. So Blake Hunter, Snell. Hunter, what's up, man? Behind me. Oh, man. Dude, just having a blast. Enjoying enjoying the the, the KC helmet, the eye black, man. You've killed it. This whole, this whole league has been awesome. I feel like I know a lot of the players that I would have never gotten to know before if it wasn't for this. And you've been so fun to watch and, and like, really – like it's just been amazing for the league and for for myself and to to just be a part of this man i've enjoyed all of it but i do agree with you um just coming together and bringing baseball fans together and 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 having competition and and it's very it just it's so realistic 
you know, you feel like your digital players are your buddies. Like, I'm, like, talking to them, like, let's go, Buster, you know, like, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's so true. So true. You feel I, like you're I, hanging I, out with your uh, team. Funny story. The last time uh, Hunter, Hunter Pence and I matched up was in a uh, Mario Kart charity tournament. And uh, not only did he kick my butt in that, obviously the first game of the season in this MLB The Show tournament, we went nine innings. And he, he walked me off in that as well. So he's I'm 0 for 2 <laughs> lifetime in video games against him. I'm hoping to get a third uh, a third shot. We'll see what game comes up. Yeah, but you you ended higher in the league than me, so I think you get the overall victory. Uh, this is man, this has been it's been tough. How has that Alberto Mondesi card been for you, by the way? He's a stud. I mean, the guy is like 94 really speed. If you put the ball on the ground anywhere, he's going to beat it out. And that's just what it looks like in real life, too. He's he's an unbelievable <laughs> athlete. I don't know if you if you played against him, Hunter, but uh, he's, a, he's a specimen, to say the least. Yeah, no, we played against him last year. Good deal. So where are you streaming from? Where are you at? We're in Arizona still, just waiting for spring training to get going. Just hitting off a wiffle ball machine and playing MLB The Show, doing yoga in the living room, bicep curling wine bottles, whatever it takes, you know, putting an eye black <laughs> on. Your, your future, when you're, you know, shades and eye black. Just making sure that sun is definitely not affecting the gameplay. Uh, you and I both know when, when you're sitting on the bench and, and you get called upon, you better be ready. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You better be ready. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! We got here, our score. Uh, uh, yeah, we got three nothing Snell on McNeil. Syndergaard's confidence is shot. Uh, <laughs> he has lost the confidence meter, uh, and now he's facing Yandy Diaz. So Blake Snell is up three to nothing. There, we can tell you, Ian Happ, I believe, has won now eight in a row, seven in a row, something oh, like that. But he dang. Just he just is he sneaking in? Is he sneaking in? He Who's might. that running around he in might. your background, by the way, Brett? Oh, so so me and my wife we're we're out here in Arizona as well. Still, we're we're staying at a friend's house. Uh, Kale Garrison, he's actually the 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 chaplain for the Brewers. He helps out in spring training, and uh, he's got two kids. And we also have a dog here, a uh, Doberman, running around. So their two kids are running around in the back. Okay, okay. Oh, so you got a full house action. Yeah, full house. There's there's a lot going on. Like like you, uh, we hit off the tee in the in the back. Um, they put up yeah. a pool the other. They put up a uh, above ground pool the other day. So we're filling that up with the hose right now. We're we're gonna get a we're gonna get a little crazy out here. <laughs> Dang, love that. Uh, it's getting hot. It's getting hunter. super hot. Running outside right now is rough. My lips are getting burned. Like everything. <laughs> 100 degrees and, and climbing, right? I need some chapstick in the worst way. Hey, I think I can. Uh, I think I can send you some over. <laughs> That'd be much appreciated, my dude. That'd be much appreciated. Is it? Is it just you and the wifey? Do you guys have a dog or anything? Just me and the wifey. Um, there's a. We were supposed to, we actually have a dog in, in route, but uh, we're not going to be able to get it until they can travel. Okay. So, mm. I know, I'm, I'm not supposed to say that. that. Like, don't tell Lexi I said that. I won't tell her. Trust me. I won't <laughs> Nobody tell her. heard that. Chat, you know what to do. Do not clip that. Chat, you know what to do. Don't tell Lexi you heard that. Because everyone's been telling <laughs> hey. us to get a dog for forever. She's wanted a dog for forever. So I, I, I got a live game, guys. I got a live game, bro. Hunter, yeah, okay, we'll let you guys focus it. on the game. We got to hit yeah, it in the box. Focus on the game. Three, one, All right. lead. Man Hunter, first, thank you else. so much for everything. Thank Please you, Hunter. send thanks to Lexi. Uh, yes, this has been a real to, treat uh, for all of us. Wife for her tech support and uh, getting you straight, and it was uh, great to catch up with you, man. Hey, thank you, Robert. Good to see you, Brent. Colin, you're amazing. I love you. <laughs> uh, see you, Hunter. See ya. Uh, you, you know, Brett, I'm looking at I'm looking at your chat, and uh, there's some Royal fans still with some hard feelings about the 2014 World Series that uh, Hunter Pence's Giants beat Kansas City in uh, that epic seven-game set. So, uh, 
You know, that, that's, yeah, that's a rivalry that's a little, uh, guys for a bit. Tough to swallow, but a guy like Hunter Pence, I mean, you you, you just don't uh, see human beings as good as him in, in the game of baseball. Yeah. There's a lot of great personalities, a lot of great guys in baseball, but he, he stands up at the top. And, he, I mean, just listening to him talk, talk he's passionate. He, he loves to do this, and, you know, he's genuine. So I, I really enjoy talking with him. All right, we've got a live look in here, Brett, at Dodger Stadium where Gavin Lux just hit a two-run homer to tie it uh -oh. at two against Carl Edwards Jr. in the Mariners. So Gavin Lux, who has had a rough night so far, and these losses are kind of sending him on a free fall in the standings, but he's trying to get that winning run, which is now at first base, home at Dodger Stadium. This is Max Muncy. Ooh, Two outs, looks pitch. like he's going to pop up. Oh, uh, yeah, really good pitch. Yep. And we're going to the sixth. Free baseball. Uh, a, a loss by Lux would put him below the cut line. It would put him below the cut line for the playoffs, still with things up, up in the air. It would not eliminate him, but it would definitely put him below that eighth and final playoff spot. So a big game here between Carl Edwards Jr., and Gavin oh, Lux. Oh, small ball. Beat it. So he's got See, that's speed the thing. at the top. In this game, you know, with these players, if if they're fast, oh, he's doing it again. Oh, back to back. Bunt cheese. Bunt cheese. Bunt. All right. So go ahead, run in scoring position. This is Mitch Hanniger. Dylan Sporo. Speaking from experience. Speaking yeah. from experience right here, his uh, Gavin's there. His palms are very sweaty. You see pass ball right there. You, you can tell he's just out of his zone. He's overthrowing. He, need, he needs to dry his hands off immediately. <laughs> but you know what? In all seriousness, Brett, I, I think that uh, um, th there have been some nerves in this tournament. I think you guys feel the moment and you feel the competition uh, at, at certain points, huh? I think a lot of these guys would agree that uh, their competitive nature, what's got them to where they are today, is, you know, competing. And uh, so, yeah, I definitely agree that the nerves, I, I felt them. And another thing is you don't want to embarrass yourself. A lot of these guys have hundreds of viewers watching them, and in this instance, yeah. maybe thousands. So the last thing you want to do, uh, besides myself, look silly on stream you know i i, I may be one of the very few that that don't care too but, late you know <laughs> but uh no they just don't they don't want to get embarrassed yeah all first right, and so third here it looks like one out well let's see it looks like he's got vogelbach i think vogelbach is at the plate and there's a pause there i don't know if carl edwards jr is warming up his bullpen uh, in anticipation of maybe getting that, scratching that go-ahead run across the plate. Uh, Brett, are you done for the night, or are you you got one more yeah, game? Yeah, I'm done. So I had one game, and uh, it, it was exciting. I was down two to nothing in the uh, the uh, top of the, the third. And yeah. it was Michael Franco. I put him in uh, pinch hit. And, you know, Solaire bats third for me, so I, I told chat, if Solaire gets up, we were going to win the game. Sure enough, we, uh, we, we won. We, we went up three to two. Well, that Solaire card, man, it is, it's got massive pop. It's another one of those cards where if you're playing Battle Royale and you get a chance to put Jorge Solaire on your team, uh, you've had great success with, uh, with Solaire in this league, right? Yeah, so I, I actually went over team stats with uh, with everyone. Good pitch. I went over team stats with everyone, and it looks like Ryan O'Hearn is going to take home the MVP for myself. Um, and Brett Phillips is going to be co-MVP, but Jorge Soler was up there. I, I, I led the team in home runs, so that was exciting. And you would often put virtual Brett Phillips at the bottom of your order. Why was that? Yeah, you know – that's where he would bat in real life. So we stuck with uh, realistic gameplay, and uh, he he came through. He was a big contributor down there at the at the bottom of the lineup. 
Yeah. All right, here at Dodger Stadium, we've got bases loaded. As you see, Gavin Lux is beside himself. He just walked uh, that batter there. So now we have bases loaded. I think Lux thought he was getting squeezed there on that 3-2 pitch. Instead, it is, uh, it's now bases loaded with one out. Carl Edwards Jr. Like with a chance to pull up an upset. Vogelbach. I'm bringing Vogel back. Yeah. See, I like the move there, Rofo. You can see he paused the game. He, he got uh, control of his, his emotions there. He probably yeah. talked to the chat, said, you know, we got to get hyped. Uh, and, and here it is. Let's see if it pays off for him. All right. Ross Stripling against Vogelback. I'm not sure if Lux has any lefties left in his pen. Obviously, we're in extra innings. But you would love to have a lefty go against the lefty Vogelback here with one out. Here's the 3 2. Ooh. Wow. This is a big pitch right here. 3 this 2. This is a big one pitch out. here. Ground ball. Oh, Oof. knuckle curve. Stay Fights at the bottom of the zone there. Walked him. Oh, oh, walked him. Go ahead, run is walked in. Wow. See, Roflo, it's unacceptable right there, you know, from your pitching staff. You, I, if I were the manager, I would be going out there and having a word like, listen, we're in extra innings and you're walking, guys. It's unacceptable. Uh, we're going to have to put you on the bench for the next couple of days. <laughs> See, All right. This might be deep enough to score an insurance run. So instead run of two runs here, we're looking like, oh, man, instead of one run, yeah, two, two runs, run, two run lead. Score. How about the smart play, though, by Lux to throw to third, not throw home, concede that, that, you know, that fourth run, but not allow that fifth run to get to third base? All right. Yeah, it's smart baseball. That's exactly what you would do in real life there. Kind of just keep the runner at second uh, so pass ball doesn't score any runs here. Carlos Gonzalez. One. That could be trouble. Oh, and it falls. It Rookie Betts unable to make the catch, but he's out at second, at second, but a run does score. Wow. It's now 5-2, to two, Carl Edwards Jr., in extra innings, going to the bottom of the six. Okay, so I'm reading some messages here, Brett. Um, New York is going to enter, is now in a tie, is going to go into a tiebreaker with Bo Bichette. McNeil and Bichette, a tiebreaker for third. Bachette wins third place via the tiebreaker on runs scored. Runs scored for Toronto uh, for Bo Bichette was 98. I'm sorry, 108 for Bo Bichette, 98 for Jeff McNeil. So Bo Bichette via tiebreaker is now your third seed uh, going into the playoffs. As you see, Gavin Lux just leads off the bottom of the sixth with a double. And Carl Yeah, you know, Bo, I played Bo the, uh, last night, and uh, he he's obviously third place, one of the better uh, players in the league. I got off yeah. to an early lead, 14 to nothing on him in the first, but uh, I don't want to really uh, rub salt in any wounds. <laughs> Wait, how did you score 14 runs? Good Lord. Uh, row flow. When I tell you I was on every pitch, my pitcher hit a double, okay? I was on one. Oh, wow. Uh, we can tell you that the, the our tiebreakers are going to be uh, implemented because these games and these results are causing quite a logjam. Let me give you what the what the we, playoff, we what the tiebreakers are. We have the are. standings. I have live Do standings. Do you? All right, right let's bring that up. in, let's, Control Room Colin. Let's, let's take a look at the replay. All right, so, these are so just this is updated. where we stand. This is updated. You see Smith and Canely at 7 and 8. Canely will play on Wednesday as part of that ESPN2 doubleheader to wrap up the regular season. Blake Snell has had a couple of big wins. Uh, he's now 24 and 5, uh, one game ahead of Joey Gallo. And Bo Bichette, I just mentioned those tie-breaking uh, procedures. Bo Bichette locks up the three seed. Jeff McNeil is also in the playoffs. He'll be the four seed. And you see Gavin Lux uh, was trailing 
Why don't we go back there, Colin? Let's go Let's back go. there full to Dodger. It's now a final. It is now a final. Carl Ooh. Edwards Jr. has just beaten Gavin Lux 5-2. So, Colin, uh, I, I think that is – is that three straight losses for I Lux? Think, let me pull it up on the sheet here. Let me see. Let me double check that because he lost to McNeil in walk-off fashion to open the night. And then – and yeah. then – Three straight losses. Yes, yeah, three straight losses lost for Gavin. to Tommy, Jeff, and now Carl. <laughs> wow, so. Brett, you you so uh, you you might have caused things to to turn for the worse for Gavin Lux after that beating you put on him yesterday. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, I, I I didn't play Gavin Lux yesterday, so uh, it was actually Bo Bichette. <laughs> oh, it was Bo Bichette. You're right. You're right. It was Bo Bichette. <laughs> I'm getting but, my uh, young can, super. Hey, listen. If you want to put that blame on me, Roflo, I, I, I can take it. Okay. Hey, how, Brett, how would you say as we uh, see Will Smith hit uh, a batter in San Francisco? Uh, Brett, how would you say your uh, your skills have progressed as the league has gone on? Yeah, you know, honestly, when I played the best, I I played at my best. And uh, if you look at some of the guys I I beat, like Gallo and uh Bichette and some of those leaders up there at the top you know i just fell apart there honestly i played consistent baseball i was 15 and 14. um you know some of those games i went back with with mistakes uh that i wish i could take back but that's the name of the game that's baseball for you if you you know if you make a mistake it could cost you uh four four runs yeah as we look here at the at the standings and once again just updated uh, yeah, just updated. So that is that you see now 10 losses for Gavin Lux, including three here tonight. He has dropped three in a row. So he started the night 19 and 7. Now he's 19 and 10. Uh, Jeff McNeil is the four seed. Bo Bichette has locked up a three seed thanks to the run scored tiebreaker. And you see that race for that eighth and final playoff spot. Right now, Tommy Canely is. Uh, just inside the cut line with Dwight Smith and Lucas Giolito. And look at Trevor May. Colin, Trevor May, um, he he needed he started the night needing wins and needing help, mm -hmm. and he's played himself right into the thick of things again. He's he's right on the edge. So It looks like he's right. going to have to win one more game he's... with 15 runs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, yes. but that's possible. <laughs> That's possible. Uh, let me see. Let me pull up his uh, twitch.tv slash I am Trevor May. Uh, I don't know if he's playing right now. Uh, yep, he is playing right now. It's, I, he's about to get underway. Uh, who is he playing? Okay, he's going to be playing Ian Happ. So, Ian Happ, uh, this is a game with playoff implications for him, or playoff seating, rather. And then a big game for Trevor May. He needs wins, and he needs them badly. Uh, some smart uniform choice here by Luke Jackson to go powder blue uh, here in San Francisco. Uh, still here with, with Brett Phillips. Um, Brett, you were, uh, you were a pretty heavy streamer before this league uh, began. Um, you know, what, what is I, – I guess what was your experience like with, with the chat and, and – uh, and uh, with, with the Q&A and kind of the interaction with the fans. Yeah, so I think I have close to 20 months on, on Twitch, uh, mostly streaming more in the off season. But uh, it's, this has been a great opportunity for me to grow my stream and, and grow my viewers. I think I, I averaged around a couple hundred viewers in the past. It was only like 30 or 40. Uh, so that's been awesome. Uh, the, the chat has gotten to uh, know me better in – and know the game better too. I know a lot of people that have messaged me and have been like, you know, I downloaded MLB the show because I saw you playing it and it, and yeah. it looks so fun like, and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Uh, that's what it's all about, you know, engaging with, with the fans, showing them personality and, and obviously uh, talking back with them. They, they enjoy that. Hey, Brett, we know that during the season, you're uh, you and, and the rest of the players across the league, your time is very limited. There are great, 
there are a great deal of, of demands of your time. But could you, uh, would you be willing to participate in, in something like this if this league were to continue on in, in some form moving forward? Yeah, so actually I had my agent uh, contact some people at, at PlayStation. And uh, I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to extend. If, if they want to extend anything, I'm definitely, uh, I'm yeah. definitely in. This has been so fun. And uh, my name is, I hope my name's always in, on the list for, for things like this from, from Sony and MLB The Show. So, uh, like I said, I, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. It's been awesome. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I think that uh, the, the fans have really responded, and I think the players have, uh, have enjoyed it as well. Uh, I'm checking in on Trevor May's stream. Uh, still no score. Two outs in the top of the first. He's taking on Ian Happ. Uh, May needing wins and needing a little help uh, to play his way uh, back into the into the playoff picture. Uh, you know, using using your lineup the way you did, Brett. Um, you had Mondesi and then you had Whit Merrifield at the top with Soler and Salvi Perez uh, behind them. I mean that that would that's a pretty potent lineup, and you really played well with that group. Yeah, you know, I, I was looking at the stats. I, I was in the top 10, I think top five, actually, in, in the hitting category in the league. Uh, I put up runs. I know I was top 10 in, in runs scored. And if you look at my, my lineup, it, it just reflects on, on the, the, the offensive side, the amount of guys one through eight because we were hitting the pitcher in the nine hole. There was no DH. Yeah. but. It just shows that, you know, these guys are, are super talented, not only in the video game, but in real life. And, and I know as an organization, we're getting back to that 2014, 2015 runs that the Kansas City Royals, you know, went on for to win the yeah. World Series. Yeah. And uh, I think we're a lot closer than, than fans think. And I know there's a lot of people in the chat saying, come on, like, let's be realistic here. But you know you're not here. You're not in the clubhouse with us day in and day out, seeing the work that we're putting in. You know we had a great spring training. We're staying together as a group. We have Zoom calls uh, weekly to keep everyone together. I know today uh, we had a Zoom call to to go over fundamentals. I won't talk about them, but just having the whole team present together and in staying as a team through all of this, I think it'll reflect how we play when we when we get back. Well, that's interesting. I, I had not heard of, of any major league team uh, doing that, using uh, Zoom calls to uh, just kind of check in and uh, still uh, maintain some contact throughout this uh, throughout this pause. So I, I think that's uh, I think that's rather special. Special. Yeah, and it and it's a testament to who Mike Matheny is. I know I've talked about him uh, on chat before or on the stream before, but you know he's a leader and he he's passionate about what he does and he and he just cares. He cares a lot. And it, and it shows in being on the inside and, and, you know, not looking from the outside and just seeing stuff, uh, you know, articles and stuff. You're, I'm there every day with this guy, and I really think he's going to lead us back to the playoffs. Well, uh, you know, we're looking at the standings here, Brett. And, and of all those teams below the cut line there, it's Fernando Tatis with 109 runs scored, and you're – of this group of teams below the cut line, you've scored the second most runs at 88. You're putting up – your offense was not the problem. Yeah, I know. I Honestly, I had good – a great pitching staff, Keller, Duffy, guys like that. It's just um, I think how my pitching was set up. I If I could have done it differently, I think I would have gone with uh, the, 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 button, the press button. I don't know what that's called. But uh, as opposed to the – yeah, the meter. You I wish I would have gone with the meter. meter. Yeah, I think I would have been a little more consistent. I threw a lot of pitches down the zone, and uh, that definitely showed up on my runs given up. I gave up a lot of costly home runs. But, you know, as the games you watched, I think I was – there were one-run games for the most part, and then letting up a run or two there at the end that, that hurt, bit me in the butt. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Fernando Tatis Jr. also uh, eliminated uh, earlier this evening. And uh, the, with the results that we're having, uh, we're having to use tiebreakers. There's a whole lot of things still still up in the air. Uh, 
still here with uh, with Kansas City Royal Brett Phillips. Um, we were taking a look at some of the other results. Uh, who was who was the best player that you played uh, in the league, Brett? So I honestly have to go with Blake Snell. He's consistently was pitching and hitting. If you left the ball anywhere in the zone, uh, I think he got a base hit off me. As for uh, pitching, he was just dotting everything. And I mean, Snell, he he practices this game. Uh, this is this is one of his games that he streams a lot. Yeah. So I'm not yeah. saying that he should have been the best, but the amount of time that he's put in, that's just, that's how you get good at something. And uh, yeah, I guess touche to him for practicing and putting in the effort and, and the work into this game because it's uh, paying off for him. And he has an opportunity to make a lot of money for uh, his boys and girls club, which is super special. Very special. Uh, Deef's Habs, uh, Dwight Smith Jr. has not clinched a playoff spot yet, so uh, don't put that out there in the chat just yet. Hey, uh, Colin, I think the chat's getting restless. Uh, they're wanting a game. Is there a game oh, that we can go to? Um, we, I think we're, let me, we, I'll, we, I'll circle around. I'll, let me check to see who's still okay. playing. If, see, if there's got, no game, I can, I can give them a little, little show if they want. <laughs> well, hey now, uh, let's see. What what are we doing here? Okay. 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 Hey. 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 Wow. You're, you're, you're really after. Look at you. <laughs> so good. That was so good. that was awesome. That's hey, what, what people that come in my <laughs> If that doesn't go viral, I don't know what hit, what will. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what people come in my chat for. They don't come to see my gameplay. They come to see me dance. <laughs> uh, I loved it. It was a little bit of the new. I saw a little bit of the old with some running man. It was like an homage to all sorts of generations of dance, Brett Phillips. I'm a hybrid. Let me tell you what. So I'm wearing my wife's uh, Freddie Mercury shirt here. If you uh -huh. look, it's a little... It's a little short. It is. So, uh, it is. So how I opened stream tonight, I uh, I had to. If you can hear it. Oh yeah. You, know, you can't go wrong. With that. I so I gave him a little queen, a, a little show, and uh, gave him some top tier gameplay tonight as well. They enjoyed it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Trevor May has uh, opened up a 2 nothing lead on Ian Happ. Uh, Colin, let's see if we can go to that game with, uh, with Ian Happ yeah, and Trevor right. May. Let me see what Who I can needs do. wins and help. Uh, boy, I'm looking at my hair on this profile shot. Brett, I need a haircut. I am in need of a haircut in the desperate, most desperate way. Right now, row flow. That, if there's any, nothing. if there's oh, anyone whoa. that needs a haircut, uh, wow, I got some, yeah. uh, some you, cabbage you know growing it's in. Kind of a, it's kind of a, a a spin doctor's thing you've got going on here. I don't know. That's a dated reference, probably for most members of the chat, but uh, I don't know if you are familiar of the spin doctors and. I picked that and, uh, up, Robert. I picked that up. Okay. Control room Colin knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, Google it. Google it, Brett. You'll you'll when you see it, you'll be like, oh, okay. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Is it good? Um Oh yeah, they were they were uh, were they uh, they may have been considered a one hit wonder they, band in the in the nineties. Yeah, two princes. There you go. Gardino coming in strong with a chat. Two princes. He knows. He gets it. Um all right, so let me go back. We're gonna. What did you find up, out about uh, Trevor May? We're bringing that up in a second. Just needed to get it okay. here. All right, he's got Taylor Rogers now in the second. Uh, leading. Oh, that game is tied at two. Brett Ian Happ just tied it at two. Oh, we mm. gotta go watch this game. We gotta go see. Yeah, this we gotta game. watch it. One we gotta second watch it. here, guys. We're bringing it up. All right. Chat, everyone, okay. can we get a hashtag? Come on, Colin. <laughs> Let's put there, some pressure on. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right, we're back. There's Commissioner Trevor May. 
Commissioner Trevor and, Mann is uh, blue yeah. lens glasses on. That's when you know he's uh, he's serious now. He's locked in. Steven Souza okay. Jr. against Taylor Rogers. Brett, have you faced Taylor Rogers? You got any experience with him? Uh, yes, I have faced Taylor Rogers actually. Um, I don't know. You would have to look at the stats, but I'm, I think he struck me out a, a few times, but that's not saying much. He, I mean, with that, it, it's like he's all arms and legs coming at you, huh? Yeah, there's a lot coming at you, and he throws across his body. I feel like everything is away. He's a he's really good, really good pitcher. All right, I'm pulling up your stats here against. Let's see, Minnesota. Uh, Taylor Rogers. 0 for 2, two strikeouts. <laughs> I called it. Yep. I don't forget stuff um, like that. Hey, but I would let you know real quick if I hit a homer off him. <laughs> uh, what's been the uh, – when you think about – if I were to say, Brett, what's your, what's your most favorite at bat? What's your best moment at the plate so far in your big league career? You would say what? Uh, yeah, I mean, I have a couple. Um, one of them being last last year, Ned Yost's retirement game, the last game of his life. Uh, I hit a walk-off sack fly to right field. That was uh, very special. And uh, my first home run in Milwaukee was was super special. It was off the bench. Funny story, I'm, I'm down in the, in the clubhouse, and I'm hitting in the cage. And Matt Garza was through five innings and his spot was coming up. Obviously, everyone in the National League knows that you have to when you're on the bench, you have to be ready every night because the the pitcher's hit. So I'm, right. I'm down in the cage and I'm I'm in my own I'm in the zone. Like I'm in my own world. It's I'm new to the big leagues and I'm just hitting off the tee kind of like dazing off, right? Well, someone comes down there and is yelling, "Phillips! Phillips, let's go." And I come sprinting down the tunnel and Pat Murphy's like grabbing onto my jersey, like, where have you been? Like, get in there. And I'm like, what? He's like, get in there. And I like grab my bat and I like run run up to the plate because they were looking for me, like they were waiting for me. And I don't even take I don't even remember taking a uh, a practice swing. And sure enough, Jeremy Hellickson is pitching. He throws a curveball first pitch, and then next pitch was a changeup that he left down the middle. And I hit it off the uh, right center, hit it off the uh, the stands, and it was a go ahead, go ahead homer. It was awesome. <laughs> so you, you didn't, uh, they couldn't find you because you were doing your getting your pregame hacks on, right? Yeah, I was getting my pregame hacks on. I was I was in the zone, you know, like I guess. I mean, I it was new. To, it was all new to me. It was my first time really being on the bench in the minor leagues. I play every game. So I right. wasn't necessarily ready to like come in this position, and uh, it, it 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 worked out though because I had no time to get nervous or anything. And after I hit the homer, Pat Murphy pulled me aside. He said, "If you're if you're ever if this ever happens again, you're going back down to the minors." <laughs> <laughs> Here we have a oh boy, Trevor May. Or no, I'm sorry, Josh Donaldson going deep, and now Trevor May is back on top, three to two. Uh, Brett, what is the toughest thing about being a bench player in terms of how do you stay ready? How do you stay sharp when the playing time isn't consistent? Yeah, so I think a lot of people lose sight when they look at guys' batting averages. They just automatically assume that they're everyday guys. Uh, if you look at the batting average for a bench player, the last time I checked, it was around. That's a good piece of hidden. Uh, it's a, a blooper. Last time, I think it was around like 200. So, you know, you're consistently not getting at bats. Uh, you're, you're, you're constantly staying warm. You may get one at bat a game. You may play once a week. And, you know, when guys are getting 500, 600 ABs a year, you have wiggle room to get your, your timing, you know, get your bearings going, get stuff going, you know you're going to be in the lineup every day. But as a bench guy, you, you may get, you know, four at-bats uh, a week. And if you get one hit in those four at-bats, you're hitting 250. If not, you know, you, you have a really good opportunity or a really good chance to, like, 
you know, go downhill. So uh, I think yeah. it's all perspective. But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm I'm so blessed to be a major league baseball player, regardless if I'm a bench player. I know a lot of people are like, you're trash, yada, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, man, I'm so appreciative. I think anyone in their world would trade um, their spot to, to be in the position I am in. And uh, I, I personally, I believe in myself. And I believe once we get going and I get those repetitions going, I'm going to show everyone um, that I, I can – perform offensively and, and i believe in myself and at the end of the day that's that, that's what everyone needs needs to have to be successful yeah brett now that's a that's oh, a great, sorry, great perspective brett you've been um, one of our it, favorite broadcasters and we have a highlight reel of some of your best moments should we take a look at it yeah yes, let's i would love to <laughs> let's take a peek now that they both missed i think did you did you brett phillips go ahead Let's go! We got it. We got some smoke in the chat. Let's go. Let's go, Philly. All the way. All the way. We going all the way home, kid. All the way. Inside the Parker. Get down. Get down. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> I just ate it. So now I had to go eat oatmeal. I had to go make oatmeal. <laughs> and those were that's some so of our good. favorite moments. Brett, oh, your, man, your personality awesome. is infectious. And I know chat, everyone on the team at SDS, we've loved having you on. You're, you've gained tons of new fans. Uh, and you've been uh, awesome for us in the league. We can only appre we appreciate everything you've done. Yeah, I been appreciate great, Brett. you guys. Yeah, thank you, Roflo. Thank you, Colin. Everyone at uh, SDS, appreciate you guys. It's been a great opportunity. And and like always, keep my name up on that top of the list whenever you need stuff like this. Whether it's uh, it, it streams done or or tournaments or charity events, whatever it is that you guys are cooking up, keep me in mind. All right. Anytime. Anytime. It. Brett, cool. good stuff, man. We'll catch up to with you soon, okay? Thanks, All right, Brett. guys. Take it easy. And uh, as always, God bless. Appreciate you guys. You got good it. Night. Brett Phillips of the Kansas City Royals. We just saw Trevor May. Trevor May beat, won. He won. Beat Ian Happ. Yeah. So that is a big, big win. That was our final game of the night, but we are not done yet. Okay, that so. was, I think that was the final game of the night. Yeah, that is the final game of the night, but we're but we're not done because we're we're going to try to formulate and calculate and try to get a semblance of what the playoffs are going to look like. Now, mind you, there's still two games left to be played, and those two games will be played Wednesday on ESPN two as part of a doubleheader. So those two games on Wednesday will be the final games of the regular season, and this is our final stream. Because the playoffs are going to be broadcast by our partners at ESPN, FS1. So that is still yet to be determined. Okay, here's what we got. We're, we're calculating. We're still updating, we're Robert. We're calculating it right now. The Cubs, 19 and 10, they're in the seven spot. Now, on Wednesday, if Lucas Giolito wins his game on Wednesday, they would have the tiebreaker and jump to the seven seed with the Cubs and Ian Happ moving to the eighth seed. If the Yankees win, Tommy Canley is playing one of those du uh, doubleheader games on Wednesday on ESPN2, then the Cubs are eliminated. Okay, do we have all that? Let's go through it again. Here we go. The Cubs, with the Ian Happ, they're 19 and 10, okay? So Happ is now in that seventh spot at 19 and 10. If the White Sox win on – if Lucas Giolito wins his game on Wednesday, then they have the tiebreaker and they jump to the seventh seed. Ian Happ takes the eighth seed, and that means uh, that then if the Yankees win, then Ian Happ is eliminated. So there, is still, there are still some scenarios that are still in play that have yet to be decided, and they won't be decided – until Wednesday on ESPN2, 10 o'clock Eastern. You're going to have to tune in for that. 
to find out what the seedings and what the bracket is going to look like. Now, Colin, do you want to show people the bracket? I know we don't have the names all filled in yes. yet. Let me. But we do have some guys that are locked in. Pull it up here. One all right. second. All so right. Let's see if we can. Blake there Snell, go. Joey Gallo, Bo Bichette, they are in. Okay. So you see uh, Joey Gallo, Blake Snell, either one of them are going to be the top seed. They'll take on the eighth seed in a best of three series, four against five, also a best of three. You get the idea. That will also be the case for the semifinal round, a best of three series. Okay. But once we move to the championship series, it is a best of five. Okay. So top eight players get into the playoffs best of three for the quarters and semis and then best of five for the championship and those games will be broadcast on espn fs1 and of course uh we'll be keeping you up to date as much as we can follow all the social channels uh mlb the show and uh mlb network the wrap-up shows continue so wall-to-wall -wall coverage basically if you can't find us it's on you okay because we're either, it, we've been streaming on twitch it's on TV, it's on Big Boy TV, it's on the streams, it's everywhere. The MLB The Show 20 Players League has been fantastic. It has been amazing. There have been so many people behind the scenes that have done incredible work putting this together. Remember, remember, these 30 players were in all parts of the country. It was a technological feat. And uh, Control Room Colin, uh, yes, sir. That control room has basically been your living room. You've you've yeah. done a fantastic job, man. Thank you, sir. No, it's been super fun putting this on. We've had a great time. It's been awesome seeing uh, all the fans of both the game as well as baseball have something to get together, get behind, watching each of the teams. And the thing that's actually been really awesome is seeing all these personalities brought up to the front. Yeah of people in different parts of the region becoming Amir Garrett fans, people becoming Lance McCullough fans, uh, having those personalities shine. Brett Phillips been... fans. Brett Phillips fans, yes. I'm a Brett Phillips fan forever at this point. So getting yeah. being able to see those personalities has been super rewarding for myself and as well as for all the fans who've been watching at home. So, yeah. uh, And for all the fans who've been watching at home, uh, all the fans, all the people at SDS uh, want to thank you guys for tuning into all the streams and stuff. That Absolutely. We've been doing. Major League Baseball, the Major League Baseball Players Association, Sony Interactive Entertainment, the Boys and Girls Club of America, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada, of which, you know, what we're playing for, that is the, uh, the charity that we are playing for. But we also want to thank, more importantly, the players. Um, this has been a huge undertaking, and it has been a time commitment. Uh, yes, these guys are not playing, but they are training, and it has been a, a time commitment, um, and, and we appreciate them for, for taking the time, for firing up their own personal streams, their own personal Twitch pages, and uh, asking or answering questions from you, the fans, and interacting with the chat. It has been a whole lot of fun, and I've had a blast. I love this game. I play this game all the time, so it's really been great to see this game put on on this kind of stage and in this league and in this format and remember we still have the playoffs yet to go hey colin i think we've yes. got a special uh tribute video right yes to, uh, we do to we're, we're gonna close with that let's go look at the standings one more time we'll close with the video okay and then uh so yes let's pull that up real quick here so we have this okay let's go over some of the crazy things that happened tonight as well so gavin yeah, Lux losing three games yeah, yeah he lost all three games tonight yeah um so that 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 had him free falling a little bit. We had Jeff um, McNeil winning uh, three, uh, which was yep. huge for him to. He he has him. locked in a playoff spot. Yes. Um, and I think with if, if I'm reading this correctly, Colin, now correct me if I'm wrong, and mm -hmm. and and Janet, who's who's behind the scenes, can correct me if I'm wrong as well. I, I think with Gavin falling, that helps Dwight Smith Jr. So I think he's in a yes. good spot right now. Yeah, so Dwight with the run scores. So run scores is one of the first tiebreaker scenarios. So okay. right now Dwight is above Gavin. So uh, okay. So um, and that doesn't look like it's going to change because they both have twenty nine games in. So yeah, I, I would love to see Dwight Smith Jr. Uh, make a run in, in the postseason. I don't think 
that he can win it all. I think, look, if you're having to pick a couple of favorites, it's Snell and Gallo. That's easy. But with the way Dwight Smith plays and having to play with the Orioles, and there are no diamonds on, on that uh, in that live series rosters, there's no gold, and the way he plays, he's patient at the plate. I think he's a very good player on the sticks, and I would love to see him uh, you know, make some noise, maybe uh, make some of the favorites sweat a little bit. Whether that happens, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, but again, thanks to everyone that was a part of this one behind the scenes. Uh, thanks to you, the chat, everyone that uh, watched the streams, watched the shows, and uh, ESPN, FS1, our broadcasting partners for the playoffs as the postseason is set to begin later this week. All right, so we leave you now with some of the best moments from the MLB The Show 20 Players League. We'll see you on Wednesday on ESPN. Hold on. We, hey, little stretch part. We need to stretch. Lux, get up and stretch a little bit. Oh, extra energy. Lux, you stretching right now? Yeah, Oof. yeah, I'm up. Yeah, you got to get up and stretch a little bit. Come on, Pete, do something cool. That is cool. Riz, Riz looks laser. Okay, good job. I'm probably like you. You're my best friend. Oh, they got boo, they got boo, they got boo. The throw to the plate. Oh, uh, baby. Not in time as he should cross with the run. This is live. Now a live oh. right field. Oh, he's dead. Let's go, Dolly. Oh, my, I messed up. I messed up. Somebody tell Jeffrey. That's why you don't make dumb mistakes, bro. Don't do dumb stuff. Do not. Oh, my God. He ran. <laughs> if you hit a homer, I'll name my firstborn child. Oh, Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Let's go! Let's go, baby! Captain America. Captain America. Oh, baby! Let's get it. I can't be screaming. I got the cat back there. We all know this. Big, big, big. Let's go, puppy power. That means she gets a tree. You get a treat. He scored a run. I just let a fastball right down the middle. That's okay. You're so cute. Don't matter. Holy scamole, guacamole, ripperino, cappuccino. He's going home. Inside the parker. <laughs> get out! And I opened my Chipotle, and someone, whoever delivered it, ate a bite of my Chipotle. <laughs> I'm gonna send you a picture, Brett. <laughs> hey, that's that's Brett's pterodactyl laugh. <laughs> now we bang. My heart is pumping all these games tonight. Dude, I was shaking that entire game. Stay focused. Good things will happen. There it is. There it is. Ball game, baby. Let's go. I won! That's how it is, brother. If you beat the best, you're the best. Bye-bye! Oh!